Hello everyone, welcome to What If Deku Had Deadpool's Ability Part 1. Before we start please go support Redpan45 for writing that awesome fanfic. Now let's begin. The beginning. Inko can you please terminate the pregnancy Mitsuki said worried for her best friend's well-being. You are at stage 4 the chances of you surviving as low as it is. I can't. I have to have this baby it is the is the last thing of Hisashi I have left. Inko says holding a photo of them together with a note on the back. She read note that he left behind revealing why he died. They weren't poor by no standard they were middle class. Though Inko came down with cancer soon after they married. It progressed quickly though Quirk slowed it down the progress they did not cure her. A couple weeks later Inko found out that she was pregnant so the situation became dire. Asashi worked his hardest to provide for his wife and soon to be kid. Eventually the insurance couldn't cover for the treatment. This dug into Thayer's savings and soon their savings became dangerously low. Asashi tried to reach out to their extended family for help only to be ignored by them. Hisashi had done his best to provide and get funds, only to be ignored by everyone around him, except for his wife's best friend childhood friend Mitsuki and his best friend childhood friend Masaru Bakugo. They both tried to help and reach out using their connections to no avail. Inko was four months into the pregnancy it was not going smoothly. She had many close calls causing lots of fear from her husband. He was raggedy sold his childhood home and car. He soon bought a barely functioning one to get around. He made one final attempt to get the money. While driving his car mysteriously and accidentally broke down while driving on the lone road in the dead of night. This caused the car to flip over multiple times causing his death, though when they found his body, he had a smile like he was happy to finally rest because his family would be fine. He had taken a whole life insurance claim on his life naming his wife the main benefactor. Mitsuki, I know that Izuku will be fine Hisashi worked so hard for the both of us. Inko said rubbing her stomach. She was much thinner though she kept her hair. Izuku. Mitsuki asked confused Yemi and Hisashi decided the name if it was a girl or a boy. Izuku for a boy and Izumi if he was a girl. The names are unique and stand out, Inko said as her voice lowered. It's just a feeling that the baby is a boy. Inko Mitsuki started to talk but Inko grabbed her hand. Looks like little Kitsuki will have a friend, I wanted to see the two to grow up together, her voice said getting weaker her eyes watered up. She started weep tears Mitsuki can you promise me promise me that tea that you take care of H him. Mitsuki looked at her childhood friend and nodded holding her hand with hers. Inko you will pull through this and raise a H healthy baby B boy she yelled sobbing. Inko smiled as she looked past her best friend and saw her husband behind her. Inko slowly fell back in her bed as her vitals dropped and the heart monitor flatlined. Mitsuki saw this and yelled for the doctors. They rushed in trying to resurrect her to no avail. Ma'am the baby that she carries is preventing us from bringing her back. You have to make the decision to terminate the pregnancy or save the baby. The doctor asked wearing a saddened face. Mitsuki was going to say terminate the baby till she looked at her childhood friend's face and saw how peaceful she was. Finally at peace after all the pain she has gone through in the past couple months. S save the bee baby she yelled with tears coming out slamming her fist into the wall making a dent. She had to let go of Inko for her son that what she would have wanted. They rushed her to the emergency room. Mitsuki watched her childhood friend more like the sister she never had get wheeled away. Masaru walked up with a sleeping Kitsuki and pulled her into a hug. They waited and waited for their friend's kid to come out without the mother. Though Mitsuki was scared because the baby newborn would come out premature. At this point he has been in the womb at the latest seven and a half months. So she had a right to be worried. Eventually they came out and informed them that Izuku was okay he was just in the incubator. Ma'am you were listed as the godmother of the child will you take him as your own? The doctor asked handing her the birth certificate. Mitsuki took it and wrote down his name. Izuku Midoriya Bakugo. She wiped her tears and let the process of life happen. She and Masaru were the only ones to come to her funeral. Inko was buried next to Hisashi, and all of their assets went to Mitsuki and Masaru, so they put it in the bank for Izuku in the future. She promised to protect Izuku with her life. By the time he was three they discovered that he had gotten cancer. Mitsuki was distraught thinking she would lose Izuku her son like Inko. Though a miracle had happened when Izuku was in the womb. They studied him found out that he has had cancer to be specific lung cancer his whole life. It had spread throughout his entire body though the reason he didn't get sick or died was because during his time in the womb Izuku developed his quirk from his mother's stem cells, trying to keep him alive. Which develop into a quirk using the said stem cells to activate his quirk gene, causing a mutation to give him regeneration. Which Mitsuki called the miracle Inko's final gift. This brought Mitsuki and Masaru to shed tears of happiness, knowing they wouldn't lose Izuku to the cancer like his mother. Well Kitsuki didn't understand what was happening but was happy as well. Back in we can heroes Izuku said raising hand in the air, yeah we fukin can he yelled. Fukizuku repeated which Mitsuki heard. 
Katsuki, happy times, Izuku Katsuki yelled kicking down the door while Masaru walked behind him. I got my quirk look Katsuki yelled letting little explosions pop off on his hands. Izuku looking closely and inspecting the hands. Can you do it on on your feet? Izuku asked lifting his own foot. Let me try Katsuki shouted taking off his shoes. He began to rub his feet together. Looks like Katsuki got his quirk. Mitsuki said drinking a cup of coffee. It is a mixture of our quirks my explosive sweat and your moisturizer quirk. Marcer responded pouring himself a cup of coffee. He sat down and then heard a massive explosion go off. I just sat down. He says running with Mitsuki to the boys room to see Katsuki in the wall and Izuku on the other wall, very close to being shot out of the window. The buck happened here explain in 30 word or less she yelled letting her explosive temper out pulling them out the walls. Me and Kaken were testing his quirk. Izuku said healing any wounds has got. Yep that was what happened Katsuki groaned in a bit pain from the blast. Fine you two are not in trouble but next time do this outside. Masaru said patching Katsuki up. Sure dad. Katsuki said with Izuku sitting next to him yeah dad we won't do it again, Izuku shouted striking a pose. That made Masaru stop and look at Izuku. He saw his old friend again Hisashi your boy is just like you. I wish that you would been here to him. He thought ruffling his hair. Both of you will make fine heroes call it a gut feeling but I just know it, Masaru said with an uplifting voice. He bends downs picking them up into the air. You two are my greatest treasure. The two were start eyed as they looked at their father while Mitsuki recorded the scene and taking photos. Inko Hisashi, I wish you could have seen them. Hut to school. Wow Bakugo you have a cool quirk, Tsubasa said with his wings folded on his back. Yeah I know I can even shoot explosions out of my feet, Katsuki yelled. Yeah it's better than Midori as another student yelled. When you think about it is can't really be cool or flashy. Another said. Can even he be a hero? He will just have normal strength. All he do is heal right. No way he can be a hero. He would just fall behind. Hey you don't have to flashy to be a hero all I want to do is help people that is what heroes do Izuku shouted with people that had more flashier quirks looked down on him. Yeah you damn extras if you want to be a hero, you have to be helping not fighting so shut about my bro not being able to be a hero, Katsuki yelled at them. This made them shut up because they knew that Katsuki's quirk in general made him stronger than them. Let's go Izuku Katsuki said marching off angrily from the group of friends. Haken can I be a hero? Izuku asked tearing up from what they said. Katsuki looked back and gave him a tight and warm embraced hug. Of course you can the both of us will be the strongest hero duo ever, Katsuki shouted marching away to lunch with his bro. Yeah you're right Izuku agreed nodding his head. Little did I know that those happy times with my family would end in a blink of an eye. Though I have held them close to my heart to keep my sanity though as of now I felt it slipping. Still dreaming no.617. The doctor asked me feeling my blood boil, I looked the old man with a bushy mustache in the eyes, you wish old man I said, clenching my fist. You still retaliate even now after 10 years. I will give you that your determination is one quality of a proper man. It would count more as a hero though. Hahaha the doctor told me mocking my dream to be a hero. Without me here your precious now must couldn't even take a blow from hound dog. I taunted him. He turned around pressing a button electrocuting me, gar what I hit a sore spot I yelled in pain, feeling my skin burning severely. By my no.617 you just don't want to be quiet. Well you are right the regeneration you have is not a quirk rather a mutation that happened to you when you were conceived. Without you the Naumus couldn't take a hit. The doctor said pulling out multiple tubes. I call it the X gene. Real original and edgy Izuku blurted out getting shocked again. You are one in ten billion chance. You are the only of your kind. So we can't take it but we can sure be able to copy it. The doctor said injecting me with multiple syringes. You know doc they will never be better than the original I say swiping my hand randomly. I know but I can get close which is enough for me and him. The doctor says checking my vitals. Your blood is rather strange it will shift to what it needs like your original is oh, but it became ab when it needed to. I am just that amazing. To be honest no.617 out of the 10 billion people on this planet. You remain being special no matter what person gets born or made. The doctor said pulling up his grandson Tsubasa or Namu no.610. Izuku hated him the most he was the reason he was there in the first place. Looks like your grandson is nothing more than a puppet like always. I said hitting my chains against the wall. You're right you know. He led you here by my orders and now he helping master with his plans. Ha 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 the doctor laughed out loud like a maniac. Well have a fun time while I am gone no.617 the drugs I injected you with should take effect by now. He said as the door behind him shut locking instantly. My skin felt like it was melting, while my senses went crazy making the pain more unbearable. My bones were cracking from my muscles contracting too tightly. My whole cellular membrane were getting melted away as my nervous system went crazy making me have spastic movement. After a couple hours my body conquered the drugs and began to heal me. 
The floor was covered with blood that flowed out my body. It flowed out overtaking the dried bloodstains from the previous night. Looks like I get to see you again child of man. I look up to see the very beautiful woman Mistress Death. This is our second time meeting Mistress Death, I say sticking out my hand trying to grasp her, believing what Kakin told me before if you touch death you die instantly, can't believe that was in a children's book. Like before I can't seem to find out why you won't pass on. Though that is best thing about you playing hard to get. She said standing by the doorway of my cage. Here I thought you like me for my looks he says winking at her. That is also a factor little one. Once you pass on your soul will be mine for eternity because you are the first ever in all of my time as death seen me while still alive. Death says tilting her head at me smiling. That sounds like a great plan for me honey, though that won't happen till I become hero. I say clapping my hands. Oh yes, your dream to help others is another part of you I like. Would you like to see them again Izuku like last time? Death ask I nodded my head. She shows me my family even after 10 years they are still looking for me. Mom was crying holding my picture as dad and Kakin held her. Their lives would have been better if I just never existed. I wouldn't have had to push mom out of the way while the man in suit and black mask grabbed me into the portal with Tsubasa. I could remember the look of terror in her eyes as tears flowed out the best I could do is smile and say. Don't worry mom I will find my way back one day those were my final words that she ever heard from me. Izuku I heard getting me out my head when will you leave this place? Mistress Death asked me and I smiled. The night I say as she fades smiling at me. I clap my hands making the needle come out of my hand that I swiped from the doctor when he injected me with the experimental drugs. Though these shackles aren't from the pirate times. They're tech-mated for the doctor to shock me. I place the needle in my mouth. I spit it towards tank it was covered in my chemical-filled blood and saliva. It rammed into the tank's cord, making the toxic chemicals leak out catching fire the moment it touched the oxygen around, along with the toxic blood. It made explosion that would have made made Kakin proud. The fire should be able to either free me or kill me, it's a win-win I think smiling as the explosion reached me. Haboom you doctor bitch, I need weapons. Just now a local factory for manufacturing self-defense items has blown up. Our sources say it was the work of villains looking for gear. Though it closed for the month so we have no casualties, except for an arm found at the point where the explosion started. New lady says Bakugo shuts off the TV. He shifts his head to the left looking at a photo of his missing brother, one day you will come back so we can do our dream Izuku. Bakugo said to himself walking out his room. He looked at his mother who was trying to keep herself up, and the same could be said about his father. He is a fashion designer while mom is a model so it works out. They have been looking for leads since he was kidnapped. They buried themselves in work but it couldn't distract them. At Suki she yelled out hanging up her phone. They found a lead. They all rushed into the car speeding down road. Dad the cops are after us I shouted and he just sped up making multiple turns eventually loosing them. Dad where the hell did you learn to run from the cops? His father looked at him, you learn things when you are young. I look at him and nod I know close to nothing about my dad when he was younger for all I know he was a part of the Yakuza with Uncle Hisashi. So what is the buck and lead mom yelled at the detective that was on the case. He was Detective Namasa the man that you can't lie to. If you would stop shaking me I will tell you he said getting dizzy after being shaken. He takes us to his office and opened a box revealing an arm. This is the arm we found at the explosion. He said looking at us with his eyes narrowing. The news said it was villains but truth is that we found a lab down there. The computers were destroyed but this arm survived the fire. Inside a cage in there and we got na sample from it. Namasa says sliding the results. It is your missing son's arm. This means he is out there healing because he took the blast point blank. He smiled and looked into our eyes, your son is alive just wait a bit till he shows up or we will find him. Hut to Izuku. <laughs> I'm out bitches Izuku laughed smashing a Namu's head with his foot that was sent out for him. What to do? what to do. Hum I don't have a plan. He said out loud with his wounds healing at a rapid pace. The doctor may have upgraded his regeneration accidentally without knowing. It's revenge story then what do you think? Wow a fourth wall break what 10 years of torture and being experimented on would cause any sane person to become me bucktards being free yet so shackled because I want to kill them all I say looking down, my hick is hanging out, I don't want to be charged for exposure. He looked around in a place trash can for cloths. He eventually found some cloths convenient. Now I need some weapons if I am going to kill the shit out of them. I say walking down the sidewalk. I am not in America so I can't go to Walmart for a gun so the junkyard it is. Walking down the street like a baller I go to the closest dump which turned out to be a beach I used to go to. Who in Buck did this? Is that a Buck and truck? I yelled. Doesn't matter killing the doctor then family. I say toppling a pile making multiple pipes impale me. Shit that bucking hurts, that is a lung and liver I yelled noticing my left arm was gone too. The piece of sheet metal got me my arm man I just got that back I chucked the arm into the ocean for the fishes. 
Let me do this when it is not pitch buck and black at night. How to find a place to stay maybe that abandoned pizza joint that suddenly is in Japan for some reason walking into the building was alright. The place looked haunted as buck but if it has a place to sleep with shelter, then at home. Sleeping there was the best because I was not chained up. Sure I have infinite stamina but that doesn't mean I can't sleep. Hut to the morning. Mother bucker had to time skip my sleeping time I yell throwing a chair into the wall, okay this is my home, an abandoned pizza joint that is far from people. So that means I own this place now. I say walking out the front door heading towards the beach. Gotta say I look like shit my cloths are dirty and ripped. I look so bad that a lady stopped and gave me her change, so yeah now I have enough to buy half of a nugget. Okay time search this beach I say slide down the rail. I will have spend a couple hours searching for anything useful. Hey. Buck I screamed out, are you stealing my supplies? No I am looking for anything useful for me use for my revenge, then go home I say to the dirty and greased up pink haired girl that had a pair of reddish goggles on. Well then don't take my supplies I need them if I am going to UA when I turn 18 I need these supplies to pass the quiz. She says while aiming a gun at me, I get that but why are you aiming a buck and gun at me? Just a little encouragement from me so you don't take. She said in full seriousness, let me put that to the test you crazy my little pony. I grab a piece metal and I feel a bullet piercing my hand, bucking crazy bitch I am gonna like you I yelled at her smiling. How about this I will bring you the parts and you will invent what I need. She thought about then nodded sure thing just don't steal my parts. From that day forward, May would come to the beach every other day and tell Izuku what to bring to her ultra super mega awesome lab workshop living quarters which just turned out to be her parents garage. It was nice to finally have someone to talk to that wasn't Mr. Stether himself. Don't get him wrong he loved talking to them scouts honor he was never a scout, but having someone his age to talk to was nice. Money. Okay Pinky I am going to track down people that kidnap me, then kill them brutally, then profit any questions. Izuku said wearing a lab coat showing a presentation. May raised her hand sitting on her couch in the garage workshop bedroom. How are you going to track them? Excellent question I don't know Izuku said breaking the stick he was using to point at the points. Shit. Well I was going to start by raiding the bases of the people that I saw them work with. Izuku said taking off the lab coat. Until they tell where the buck the doctor is. Yeah, that is not going to work. May said as Izuku messed with her babies being blown into the wall twisting his body. Izuku twisted his head back to its normal state. Making May cringe a bit will not get used to that. Well I make your gear but that will take time and money. May said making Izuku stop. Money? Yep you are my first and only client so you need to pay. She responded throwing him a hoodie and sweats. Buck me fine I will get the money, then my plan goes into effect Izuku said putting on the cloths. Eh this will be fun how to make money while having no experience in anything. Izuku said aloud walking down the sidewalk seeing a woman pulled into the alley. Looks like that is my calling Izuku yelled rushing. Izuku ran in see the man being dominated by the said woman who looked like she was having a good time, well the said man looked like his mind broke. Izuku quietly walked backwards there no way in hell I am messing with a dom feuda that is definitely not my calling. Okay let's go on a spree for some cash legally Izuku said cutting to him beating up a drug dealer for his drugs and money. Free is free he said doing the same to the others in the city. He saw a massive person selling drugs, so he did the best thing he could shit talk that was not the best choice. Hey I know have you seen my favorite around Izuku yelled being choked slammed into a car. Hahaha <laughs> what did your feelings get her? Izuku was thrown into the street cracking it. I am a buckin' hippo. Okay motto motto I heard you like them chunky Izuku shouted getting up with his bones snapping back in place. Shut up. Izuku put his fist up taunting him to rush him. Which he did throwing a punch where Izuku dodged uppercutting him which did nothing. That all you got. Motto motto yelled grabbing the said arm. Crushing it with ease then throwing him, it is times like this where I think this was a bad idea. Izuku said slamming into the another car's windshield. Izuku turned around to see a frightened mother and child. Don't worry I will take care of it he said in an uplifting voice that was meant to ease their fears. That went out the window when his guts began to spill out. That not good. Izuku stated grabbing his small intestine. I am Indiana Jones mother bucker Izuku yelled using his intestines as a lasso. He threw it wrapping around the hippo's neck. Let me go you he tried to say only for the hold around his neck got tighter. Izuku pulled till the guy dropped, looks like I am good at this he said looking back on the destruction he caused. Maybe I am rough around the edges. He said as a car blew up that is my cue to leave. He left the scene to fight more crime, getting slammed into a bar full of criminals drinking and having fun till he came in. He took the wallet of the guy he knocked out, hey don't worry about the damages I will pay. Izuku said pulling a stool to him and sitting down sliding the money. Oh you're that new vigilante the guy says taking the money sure but I am doing this for my revenge, nothing noble Izuku said, taking a swing from a full bottle of rum. Look I need cash to pull it off so do you guys have jobs that I will get paid for. 
He asked getting a nod yeah we do we are all mercenaries, so you want to sign up? He asked as Izuku nodded. My name is Weasel so I need a name so we can bet on the Deadpool, so when you die we get paid. Weasel said to me well my name is Izuku Midori Bakugo. So sign my what month is it? He asked not knowing the date. It is January 17. Then sign my 13 year old ass up, Izuku shouted as Weasel signed his name on the board. Izuku smiled like a madman, this is the beginning of a great friendship Izuku says to Weasel and cling their glasses of rum together. Wow this looks like the beginning of a long novel and a story that might become much bigger than it should be Izuku said, Izuku who are you talking to? Weasel asked to them he replied pointing at the screen. I knew you were a bit loony so I should get used to this. Cheers to our newest member Weasel yelled as everybody cheered and drank. Mom I found my bro and I think he is going to be fine. Katsuki said watching the live footage of a hooded guy in a green hoodie and black sweatpants fighting criminals. Looks like Izuku has some finished business by the looks of it. It looks like he getting revenge then coming home. Masaru said looking at the footage not flinching from the gore. Dad the hell were when you were my age. Katsuki asked surprised by his deduction of the footage. I was once a young man. Izuku just come home safe. Mitsuki said in a praying motion. Izuku was stumbling his way around the sidewalk at three in the night till he made it to a certain pink-haired girl's garage. He knocked on the door. He sees a couple fingers from door pop out and the door slid up to reveal a grease-covered May. What's up you got the money for the gear you want from little o me? She said wide awake but a little jittery. He tilts his head to the side to see multiple empty cups of coffee some on the ground. Yep hick I got the buck and money hick he said loudly collapsing on the ground. May looked left then right and she sighed. She dragged Izuku in by the arms and shut the garage door continuing to work for the night. A new job. Buck my head feels like a hammer is stuck in it, Izuku said groggily, there is I dropped it accidentally. Hatsum said with her goggles on welding. Izuku yanked the hammer from his head, spilling some brain matter to the ground. Well you gave me the money so wait till your prototype suit is made. Then we will talk about the superhero suit. Hatsum said with grin that only an insane person could make. Look I may be super but far from a hero Hatsum. I say picking up a crude blade made from scrap metal. Do you have any guns for my use? I asked putting the blade on my back. Of course the beach was filled with them take two for free but you pay for the ammo. May said spinning her chair around to face me. Anyway I can get a discount. Her eyes zoomed in studying my body and bloody cloths. Sure thing but are you sure? She asked me. I weighed my options then threw them out the window, sure thing Pinkie Pie. Okay stick your hand out she yelled as I followed her directions. She grabbed the pair of gauntlets. They opened unlocking itself for him, so he slid his hands into the cold steel gloves, then closed tightly to fit. They powered on with a hum with some leads on with a nice glow of dark blue. Nice, this buck and rolls. But that means that the spring locks didn't fail. Hatsum said with glee spring locks what now? I asked hearing multiple snaps. The locks that opened clamped down more tighter. There they go. Hatsum says knowing what exactly is going to happen to me. Suddenly the locks failed crushing my arm from the elbow down, sending metal locks into my skin, destroying my bones in my arms. Mother bucker this hurts more than eating pineapple pizza I yelled breathing heavily from the glove, crushing my nerves and bones, also turning my muscles into mince meat. Oh shit Hatsum yelled from my reaction, Hatsum cut the arms off, or I will 127 hours it I yelled with Hatsum cutting the arms off. Okay that was a terrible idea but did I get the discount? I asked with her nodding. Well by tomorrow my arms should be back so I will get some stuff from the dump. I said with May tying a little red wagon to me. I came back to see the cops there. The officer turned around and huffed, a crocodile tail smacking the ground behind him I'm guessing you're a friend o maze. Nothing bad happened that I'm aware of, just another noise complaint with this, the officer knocked on the door to the garage and yelled May open up. The door slid open and May emerged covered in oil and was that soot. What is it now? She asked annoyed this is the last warning I can give you girly. The officer replied I know that you're going to be a great inventor someday, but for now you need to keep it down, especially at night okay. The neighbors are getting all uppity again May nodded solemnly and said I understand officer, thank you. The officer looked sad but nodded and left have a good day May Izuku watched a tailed officer leave and walked into the garage. May was sitting on a stool with her head resting face down on a scorched and cluttered table. Izuku waited there for a second, contemplating before he set the parts down on the table and rested a hand on May's shoulder, you know Hatsum, I think I have a place that you could use as a workshop and not get any complaints. May's head shot up and she looked at Izuku with wide eyes, their noses almost touching where. Izuku scratched the back of his head awkwardly before simply saying come with me, the two exited the garage, shutting it behind them. Soon they arrived at an old pizza place and even though May was hesitant at first, seeing muscles go with no fear made it a bit better. Izuku led May through a door that said employees only to another room. Inside this room there were shelves on the walls and a table sitting in the middle. 
So Muscle said with a crazed smile what do you think? May sat there for a second, stunned. All of this just for her. Tears pricked her eyes a little thank you Masazuku it's perfect Azuku grinned wide, brightening the whole room and making Mei take in a breathe of course, Hatsum what are friends for? Mei smiled back, a tear rolling down her cheek yeah. Mei arrived home that night, the smile having not left her face since leaving the old pizza joint. She walked up the steps to the front door before she noticed it. There were cars in the driveway her family was home. No big deal, she can handle this no she can't. She opened the door quietly, shutting and locking it behind her as stealthily as possible before tiptoeing towards the door to the garage. May an angry voice stopped her come in here please damn it, May's head hung. They had caught her. She trudged into the living room where her family all sat around May her father said we got another noise complaint, today May flinched a little and nodded, not daring to say a word we have indulged you in trying to follow our footsteps and become an inventor but you should find something else to do her mother continued maybe take up a position at a lighthouse or something, your quirk would be really handy there, this was something May had heard before. Unlike her parents or her siblings, her quirk wasn't really applicable to inventing. Her younger sister was able to draw perfect blueprints of anything she can imagine, if she understands the mechanisms behind it. Her younger brother was able to know how to use any tool he picked up flawlessly. Her father was able to create tools from raw materials if he knew the components of it, and her mother was able to write code flawlessly and quicker than anyone else on the planet, something May had been proud of when she was younger. Her quirk however it was useless. Everyone had told her in school. The reason she didn't go daughter family and counselors tried to convince her to choose a different career path. The reason she doesn't talk to either if given the chance. And even though her parents had allowed her to use the garage to make her inventions, they also made her sleep there so as to not disturb the rest of the house. She had to build an AC unit from scratch to help with the lack of insulation in the garage. We will be having dinner in an hour, would you like to join us for once or just have your cup Raymond in your workshop instead? Her sister asked sneered. May mumbled off an answer before quickly slinking into the garage, where she let off a huge sigh. She made herself her dinner. Cheap cup ramen that her parents give her so that she doesn't starve. Dot and climbed into bed. The couch that she found at Dagaba. Later that night, May woke up in a cold sweat. She had just had a nightmare. They were common. Dot as she lay there looking at the ceiling, she finally realized something. Izuku had given her a workshop and whatever else she might need, she should thank him. Meanwhile, with the main character, okay, I am going to only ask this once. Where is the doctor? I yelled, aiming a blade at the goon's head. I slam a knife into a photo of the goon, he made me ask twice I yell pulling off my white ski mask. Does the mask muffle my voice? Don't answer that. I say pulling out pool stick from my gut. Odd this can take years I am just trying to dismember one guy not his goons, why does life hate me so? I say getting a message from Weasel. Ooh my first job a nice guy is stalking a girl that seems like a good way for free food. I put on my red coat that I bought stole, stop snitching on me, and I take off to a random person home. Pizza delivery Jenton said knocking on the door. The owner opens the door I didn't order anything. He said confused. I did just come and I will pay. I said coming out the back room. But the hell the buck are you doing in my crib the owner tried to act tough till I pulled out my gun at him. Hey hey take it easy if Jiren wants his money I will get him next week he said freaking out. Shut up I am not here for you. I here for him. I say looking at Jenton. Oh thank god I thou I push my gun to his chest making him fall back. Not out of the wood yet. I open the pizza to show a nice proper original pepperoni pizza with stuffed crust. I grab a slice taking a bite, oh my god that is so good it has been a long time since I grabbed Jenton's shirt shoving him into the wall with a gun under his jaw. Please don't kill me I didn't do anything wrong he yelled out in terror, oh yes, you have spreading rumors, stalking, and attempted gape, one of these would have made me kill you, brutally but turns out she is a kind soul you have been ruining the life of I say in a rash voice, while tears flow from his eyes. I am going to do something that will make you think twice of doing the shit you have been doing to her again I say shooting a bullet near his foot making him jump, then I put the gun in his hand. Hold the trigger at your head before I blow up the home of your parents she said for nothing to happen to you so your parent will do. I say pulling out a button. He instantly aims the gun at me, then pulls the trigger only hearing a click. Dumbest choice you have made yet in your life. Now for your parents I click the button and a massive explosion is heard. His eyes lose color filled with tears. I take the gun from his catatonic self and the pizza I order. If you talk to her or even look at her I will come find you and kill you, I say to the boy with his head slowly nodding. Also your cat's litter box is filled up. I say to the owner I don't own a cat. I look at him surprised then whose litter box did I take a shit in. I walk down the street on with the phone from the kid. I shift my head to the side looking at the billboard I blew up that said Jenton's parents home but I have some soft spots and I do have some hard spots that came out wrong. Either way that kid smelled like shit after I pressed the button just want to let you know. I say walking into a skate park and walked up to a group of girls. 
Pay Barashai Azaki it's Don she give me a hug and that's why we do it mostly for the money though. I say backing up from her. Thank the lord for your help you my hero. No 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 I am not a hero I am a guy that gets the job done unlike them or the police. I say patting her head she gives me a kiss on the cheek, well you're my hero and that was an extra payment she said quietly. I hand her the phone if he bothers you again give that to the cops then he will be arrested or I will just kill him. I said walking away to the bar with my golden card. Missions and side quests. Twinkle twinkle little star someone should have told you not to buck with me. I sung aiming my pistol into the sky, shooting into the sky twice, bang bang now where the buck is the doctor I yelled shooting a guy's foot. Tell me where your bucking boss is I yelled slicing their arms with my crudely made blades. One jumps on my back so I flip him to the ground, damn spider monkey oh wait you are a monkey oh I did I just do a quirkism. I say shooting him. After a few guys that are not living anymore for some reason. The boss was a British type he was massive in size compared to me. Okay Shitston where is your boss? I say aiming my blade at him. Oh man you like were taste in the face I yelled out turning away. Just shut the buck up he yelled swiping his arm at me. Which I slice off where is the doctor? You one arm scumbag stabbing his other free hand trying to block the blade. I kick his face breaking his nose crashing him into a bunch of boxes. I walked out with no information so I lit the place on fire. Hey Midoriya any luck yet? Weasel asked me, nope found out the place that I lit on fire was the wrong address, so I took out the wrong drug ring turns out the one I needed to take out was a street over. That would explain the amount of blades, spikes and bullet holes in you right now. Well you missed the part where I still have a dog biting my foot right now. I say with a collected tone lifting my foot showing a chihuahua. Did not know that they even sold them here. I say walking out with it still bidding. Eventually it left me alone so I left to the pizzeria. Hatsum, you in in here? I asked throwing a knife at a photo of a guy with glasses the one I had to kill. Which died later of shock so I didn't get information or got to kill him because he saw the fire. Who knew he had PTSD from fire I didn't Izuku, are you talking to the air again? Hatsum asked me as I snapped from you to her. I am talking to them not the air Hatsum. I say sliding into by red crocs. Again I still don't understand but I will let it slide. So did this purge of life get you anywhere close? She asked me spinning her around to face me shifting her legs on top of each other. Well no but I got to take out two drug rings and set one on fire in the process accidentally jumping on the couch after saying that. Either way you took out bad guys so all in a day's work right Izuku. She said with a smile. I thought about for a bit then nodded to her sentiment. Yeah but I want a specific person to kill the others I could care less about. Taking out my phone to check the news, Ha Endeavor got blamed for the fire. Izuku, you need to take better care of my babies, the sword is cracked along with guns being very damaged, were you punching people with them? She asked using her quirk to zoom and inspect the weapons. Maybe remember I am fight multiple people so can me slide with the damage I cause. I say looking at cat videos. Okay fine you get a slide. Though your suit will take some time I will finish it soon, Hatsum said showing me the blueprints. Also you need to learn martial arts. Why? I am unkillable it is like telling someone that can fly to walk, I say sneakily trying to rub my third leg. Well one day you might fight someone like All Might with super strength, so you being unkillable wouldn't matter, Hatsum yelled at me, and stop trying to jerk off I know what the hell you do when you put on those red crocs, dch buzz kill. I say sliding my hand out my pants. Look at least learn the basics so I don't have to worry for you so much Izuku. She said looking deeply into my eyes as if she was begging. Fine I will learn but if you sleep tonight because unlike me who has almost infinite stamina I can stay up for days, well you could kill yourself like this. I say kicking off my crocs. She thought for a bit then nodded sure thing Izuku. Buck 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 I should have listened to her he yelled sliding under a semi truck, not now truck kun. The truck gets broken through by a massive bear that ran towards me on all fours. If you are wondering why I am running away is because I took a job to kill this bucker. Come back here so I can use your skull as a cup, he yelled speeding the hell up buck this is just hacks fine you want to fight, then fight papa bear I shout turning around instantly shoving my blade into his paw hand. He smacks me into a car crushing the blade, I just had it fix wonder if Hatsum has insurance. I ask myself getting pinned to the ground with one arm of his. Boy I am going to have some fun with you here art at my face. You're just filled with the most pedophile lines aren't you? I say shooting his eye making back off. Bear buck you the grizzly yelled at as I dusted myself off. Now that is more like a villain line I say moonwalking dodging his wild claws. Nah I rather dance since I can't fight you fairly I said spinning quickly, then going on my tippy toes he. You damn brat you think this a game and that I am a joke I look him pulling out a white hat from nowhere, maybe I say leaning forward at a 45 degree angle. I am gonna kill yo I shot out his other eye trading a blows with him ripping my guts out, sending me flying back into street cracking it. Cheap shot I say getting up with both guns equiped. 
I can smell you boy you can't hide from me. That has to the most cheesy villain line ever like the original like me. I am kicking your ass by copying dance moves off HeroTube, instead learning martial arts like I was asked to. I admitted with blindly charging at me get it I shoot out his foot making him fall forward, then I hear a click. I didn't count. Good thing I bring two guns I yelled balking my gun with my mouth using the other to punch his nose. Raw where he screamed in pain as I shoved my empty clipped gun down his throat. I punched down on his jaw making him choke on the gun time to take your daily dose of lead I shouted unloading the rest my bullets into his back where his heart is. Click click click, ha 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 this was the worst job yet, and my last one was about helping a girl out with her cheating boyfriend I said walking away from the corpse. Man I am hungry well not really I say walking down the empty street of the bad side of Misatafu, not even the heroes will come over here, that is why the gold card is active. We deal with the trash hiding in the shadows we aren't good guys but we do our best. Suddenly a godly smell got to me, the hell is that I yelled running into a shop full of maybe legal Mexicans. They look at my bloody hoodie with a visible gun in my holster. They all instantly go back to eating. I will pay for whatever that smell is coming from my yell, and a sweet old grandma grabbed my hand, leading me to table with a colorful table mat. She placed a weird long deep fried bread. How do I eat she picked it up and placed into my mouth. Chimichanga she said in a sweet voice. Grandma I love you I yelled shoving into my mouth. I ordered many more to go for me and Hatsu. I left my entire paycheck for the introduction to a godly tasting and funny named food. Speeding up, look it wasn't that bad I said backing up from a very angry Mei Hatsum that was in front of me. I said to learn martial arts so what do you do you learn instead. Dance moves that had nothing to with fighting she berated me. Hey it worked I killed that teddy bear got the money and found this godly piece of hilarious named food. She looked at me like she was going to rip my head off and throw it into a blender to tell the truth it hurts like a bitch. I pull her into hug that she was resistance to. Look Hatsum I will learn it just for you because you are my partner in crime for all of this. Hein but you better learn it or I will find a way for you to permanently lose your manhood understand. She said into my ear making me instinctively grab my crotch. She walked away swinging her hip side to side. She doesn't even know what she is doing to me. I think biting my chimichanga that I bought earlier. Looks like I will need to do better if I want my revenge to happen. I began to search for clues linking dozens of more groups that were connected to the doctor. Some well most were just suppliers for drugs like trigger or cocaine that I gladly took for myself the cocaine not the trigger. Though they did have some intel on them about a man that was making a perfected version of Trigger but I couldn't confirm it. I ran into All Might and Endeavor a couple times. All Might or Captain Steroids the goody two shoes he is, has been trying to turn me into a superhero like other because and I quote, see great potential in you young Midoriya he told me in his deep ass voice. Turns out leaving arms, guts and tons of blood on crime scenes can really get you caught on what your secret identity is to the cops. I don't care that they know who I am because I am not stopping till my mission is done. Endeavor is still hates me for tagging his agency all over with his actual name. Endure. Look at me you pasta-faced bastard where is your boss? I yelled holding a grunt over a building he wasn't talking, so I dropped him to the ground hearing a splat. I stuck my finger into my chest holes that were caused by a bullets. Ouch these bacobblers sure know how to shoot. I say kicking ahead I sliced off like a soccer ball into a trash can. Just need to keep going, it has been a year's worth of work of taking down dug rings and hex rings but, I finally got my lead from my mother buck in revenge, I yell kicking down the door to the pizzeria in my green suit that May made me for fighting. It provided me with more protection and weapons. May chan I am home I yelled catching her when she flew at me with her new prototype jetpack. Izuku your back did you get any gear from the villain? She asked with a lovely crazed smile. No but I finally got a lead for the doctor he is going to be in a convoy soon, so I will finally get to get back at him for all he has done to me. May and I have been working together for a while now though she has been helping me out with some mental problems that I got from the torture they did to me. Looks we can finally put an end to him and maybe we can start in a new chapter in our partnership, May yelled sliding me a paper for UA University, soon I can start the dream that you have been helping me with since the art team up, you still have a lot time the both of us are still what month is it? I asked not knowing November I think. She said well we are still 15-ish. You have to wait 3 years till you can do your dream that I will gladly be the test subject of I say proudly taking my mask off. Well then let head to the gold card to celebrate for your lead and my breakthrough in making a gold titanium alloy, she yelled putting on her red coat. I could tell she cleaned herself up from the soot and grease that I am used to seeing. It was breathtaking how beautiful she was to me. Come on Izuku let's go before it gets too late she yelled wrapping my red coat around me. Sure let's go and I got a shortcut. I'm skipped to the gold card. Works every time I say with May looking confused, what are you talking about we walked here like normal. She said very confused not important, we walked to see them all look at us, I it's Captain Deadpool they yelled putting their drinks up. Captain Deadpool. I asked sitting at the bar stools. 
Well technically you can't die from anything not even cancer. So you will forever be on the board. Weasel said to me as I looked up to see who betted on me. You betted on me dying your terrible bucking friend I said sliding him a note for a drink. Well it was when you first started and I thought I would finally win some money. He admitted making the drink called the blowjob. Well the name is cool but drop the captain part, so the name Deadpool is your alias now, May exclaimed when a newbie showed up and walked up to her. Hey honey how much for 10 minutes? He asked pissing me off look buddy I wouldn't suddenly May grabbed his junk and began to squeeze tightly. Look big boy I ain't that type of girl, so you better say the magic words before they stop functioning. She said with a tone that dripping with venom. Please let go he gasped with May dropping him to the ground. Wow May that was pretty cool I said drinking my liquor. That was nothing. She said sipping her chocolate milk more like chugging. Hey Barbara can you give this to Big Tony and say it was from Kisuk. I say handing her the drink I specially ordered. May and I look at the scene as it unfolded with glee. Tony took a sip of the drink and spat it out with rage. He stomped over to Kisuk who had a mutation that made him look like a turtle, a snapping turtle to be exact. Hey you think this this a funny joke Tony yelled his quirk was called drunken rage, he grows stronger the more drunk he is. He slams his fist into Kisuk's face, making a brawl happen, with people making a perfect circle somehow. By the end of his Kisuk was on the ground bleeding. Alright alright everybody back up let me check Weasel yelled putting a mirror under Kisuk's nose, seeing that he was still breathing, false alarm guys he is still alive, so no one gets paid Weasel said, making everyone groan. That was a good show right May? I asked looking at her to see that she was drinking a heavy drink. Oh no. I say with Weasel looking at me oddly, why the oh man? She gets a bit crazy when it come to drinking alcohol. I say with a terrified tone. Last time I was left as just a head I yelled with May tackling me, he a Izuku let's make a baby again. She slurred they all looked at me shocked you have a kid. Weasel yelled no 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 she just calls her inventions baby's false alarm I yelled picking her up, whoa I am floating, and why is it getting dark? She then passed out alerting me exactly what happened to her. Did someone spike her drink I yelled out with my eye narrowing on the newbie who smirking. Oh the whore deserv I just shot his head and gave Weasel a stack of cash. He counted the cash and nodded at me to leave. I put away my gun and I leave with May in my arms. We get home and I place her in the bed I bought her, so she didn't have to sleep on a dirty couch. She latched onto me not letting me go, please don't leave me alone again like them she said with a tear leaving her eye. I will never not even when I am done with my mission. I say to her holding her tightly letting the darkness swallow me into a slumber. The convoy, I'm the real slim shady oh hi if you're wondering what I am doing on the side of this highway ledge. Well I found a little birdie that chirped to me where the hell the doctor is so this is my revenge for what he did to me and made for me I say drawing myself stabbing him to death with my twin katanas. I see a massive convoy down the road with multiple cars driving down the road a fast pace. There he is time for payback you son of bitch, I say getting up maximum effort, I walk off the ledge falling at very fast speeds. Crashing through sunroof of one of the subs I get up and show them my beautiful picture, have you seen this man? My head gets slammed into the back of the front seat premium leather I say kicking the guy beside me out the car into the road. I kick another goon into the back of the sub, making the back door open up with him hanging out the back, ha 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 he looks so stupid. I get cut off with my head repeatedly being slammed into the radio changing the song, ow 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 oh wait stop, I like this one ow I elbow the goon hitting me, and I grab the steering, making the car ram into a motorcycle about shoot me up. Then followed it up with choking another goon with my legs. I hope you don't have a choking kink. I grab the steering wheel again wait I don't know how to drive I'm only 15 the car, then flips as the world around me began to slow down, hold on did I tell mate to turn off the stove. The world sped up again with the sub flipping to its side with a guy in the back that was dragged slamming into a highway sign. The rest of the car stopped with quirks aimed at the flipped car. I get out from the opposite side, oh shit I knew I was forgetting something my bullets I say under my breath, okay show time. I raise my head hey, I instantly put me head down from gunshots, you may be wondering why the green suit. Well it matches my hair I raise my hands and point at a guy, this guy has the right idea his hair is black, so he wore the black pants the guy looks down to see that he is matching. Okay I only have 12 bullets so you're gonna have to share I yelled jumping into the air shooting two in the head with one bullet. Eleven I yelled running at them dodging their quirks, is your quirk literally making your hands rock? I ask shooting his head. Then I dodge a weak stream of fire and a guy that looked like a pig. I shoot them both in heads then kicking the bodies to the others. Eight I use the butt of my guns to slam into two faces that had strength enhancer quirks. I shoot them directly into their hearts when they flinched from the earlier blow. Six a bull mutation quirk guy stabs his horns into my chest against the flipped car. I lock my hands together slamming them down with lots of force on his head breaking his horns. I aim at his eye blasting his head to bits. 5 I take out the horns from my chest throwing them to the ground. A red-faced person rushes me with steam coming off his body. 
I slide under him as I slide under I shift my body shooting him in the back of the head. Four the final group of goons tackle me to the ground making me misfire twice, mother buckers I said share I yelled shooting the guy on top of me in the head. One I blitzed the final three tackling one into a guy and repeatedly slammed him into a car window breaking it. So I throw him into the other lining them up and I shoot my final bullet hitting the three in the head. Zero you bastards are annoying to fight in groups now for my prize I walk to the final sub ripping the door right off to reveal the doctor. I grab him by the coat slamming him into the road's ledge, I grab one of my blades and stab it through him. Ahahaha that one felt good right doctor I yell at him as he stared angrily at me, remember me you Jared looking mother bucker. I kick his face breaking his goggles, if you can't remember little o me, here is a reminder I yelled lifting my mask revealing my mouth and freckles. I am just that amazing. He lifted his bloody head looking directly into my eyes and smiled as Uku mother bucking Midoriya he yelled chuckling at me. Hot to Captain Steroids. On latest news we have a massive car crash zone of 5 vehicles, Yagi listened to the news eating cereal. Other news that we know that a man in a green suit. Yagi said buffing up into all might. Mirio let's go he said walking out. Have you had breakfast? He asked Mirio, no sir I haven't he said excited being with one of his mentors, here protein bar good for bones Deadpool might break yours ha 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 ha, all might laugh jumping into the sky with Mirio following close behind. Back to the main character duh. Now I am going to do to you what Chimichangas did to my ass last night I yelled blocking my arm back then hearing the sound of me hitting a brick wall. I feel of the area and look up dad. My arm gets grabbed and I thrown into a car I think shit has just gone sideways in the most mighty way. Let's talk about the pros and cons of being a hero. Pros large fan base, merchandise, lots of money, discounts, women want you and everyone loves you. Cons they are all a mass teacher's pets for the government I say getting up groaning in pain, you know I can hear you right. I wasn't talking you I was talking to them. Stay right here. He told the doctor, you have warned before Deadpool. This is a shameful use and reckless use of your powers. You will both be coming with us. All Might told me walking up to me. Look All Might I don't have time for your goody two shoes bullshit right now, and you are. I asked shifting my head to the All Might lookalike that was borderline cloning how similar they looked like. Lamillion he yelled flexing Lamilio what the shit that is the coolest name ever I yelled as he shrugged. So what are you his sidekick? I asked looking at All Might. No trainee. Let me guess Nezu left you behind for shit detail. I say walking to the doctor what does make you? Lamillion asked me. Pretending you're not here Lamillion. Can we trade names? I say punching the doctor in the face. Can we just arrest him? He asked All Might. Look I am training hero that would rather be out helping people than deal with insane maniac I say to Lamillion's face, you got me in a box here. They are high. And besides no one is getting hurt I say as the body from the sign falls smashed like a pancake, he was already up there when I got here. Young Midoriya you're better than this. Join us your powers for good. All Might says I throw a hubcap at the doctor's face heads up. Be a pro hero. He says listen the day I decide to be a crime fighting shit Switzerler who rooms with other little whiners that suck on the government's nipple. On that day I will send your yellow baka to ass a friend request. I am going to do what I came here to do. That or slap the bitch out you I yell at all night. And I hope you watching I turn to see the doctor gone with pool of ink being left behind. I gasp loudly, quite unfortunate I look back then at all might repeatedly. That does it I jump up slam fist at all might's face shattering my hand instantly. Ooh Canada that's not good. I say young Midoriya please box shot I punch where his balls would be breaking my other hand. Oh your poor wife, you really should stop. I back up in pain looking at my broken hands. All the dinosaurs feared the T-Rex I side flip into the air smashing my leg into his neck, breaking my left leg, landing me on my back with my twisted leg. I promise this gets worse for you big boy I yell at him. This is embarrassing. Please stay down. He says as I prop myself on one foot. You hear about the one-legged man in the ass kicking contest. Do you have an off switch? Yeah it's right next to the prostate or is that the on switch? All Might just bitch slaps me into a car. I am taking to meet Nezu. Placing a cuff on my wrist connected to him. Is he a mouse or bear I don't care I groan in pain as I am dragged. Better alive you're coming with me, you will recover young Midoriya you alway do. My hand regenerated so pull out my switch blade and start slicing off my arm. Are you there god it's Izuku I yell ripping my hand off falling off the edge of the highway landing in a garbage truck driving away. All Might looked at the hand to see Izuku left a message on it in the form of a middle finger. Why must he be so difficult? You a. Yagi why do you constantly try to persuade Izuku Midoriya Bakugo to become a hero? Nezu asked a deflated hero. He is child that is hurting inside with mind that is trying to mend itself with revenge. He has so much potential as a hero. Yagi says sipping the tea handed to him. He may be a vigilante that kills but he does the right thing. The reason I say that he could be a great hero was a single moment that I saw with my own eyes. What I saw was a young man that is doing good in his messed up version way. 
Yagi say recounting the first time he met him and he was out of time. He rushed onto the road full of incoming cars and trucks to save a little girl and her brother who tried to push her out of the way. He was able to throw them to safety as he was run over by the said car. He would rather save people than himself. Yagi stated placing down the cup. I believe he will stop being a killer of villains if he gets a chance. Nezu he would be a great child to have at your school. Nezu listened to his words and shook his head no. Yagi he is a killer that dismembers people for revenge. Yes the people he kills are terrible but that is still murder. The main reason he is not jail is because the police are afraid of him, so are some heroes. Nezu said looking directly at Yagi. He rules the bad side of Musatafu with fear. Izuku Midoriya Bakugo is wanted but the public doesn't know that. If he shows up to UA every enemy he has made will eventually follow. Nezu says pulling out a file. He has over 89 confirmed kills. The society that you created with your image of peace would fall apart with him being a hero. Nezu said showing him the crime scenes. Young Midoriya has done more good than the average pro. He has lowered the crime rate by just being around like me. His presence alone strikes fear for the villains he is the bougie man that will hunt you down with his persona of being the unkillable vigilante. Deadpool. Yagi says with pride in the boy. He was tortured Nezu he is still on the good side after everything he has been through he is still helping Tashinori says throwing his hands into the air. The answer is still no Yagi. He will only bring trouble of UA I want to protect the students. Like you said his presence alone drives villains away but that can used in reverse, once they aren't afraid they will hunt him down like an animal. Nezu says shutting down Tashinori's case for getting Izuku into UA. The can be said for me Nezu. The moment the villains think they have something for me they will hunt me as well. Tashinori said to the principal walking out with his sidekick Nidai. All Might why do you want Midoriya as hero? Nidai asked as Yagi looked at him, he may be a bit rash rather vulgar with his language but, I see something that will in itself will change the world in a good way. Hut to Izuku, sorry for bleeding all your trash I yell as the man nodded and drove away from his stop. Man it feels weird when your year-long plan ends with the wrong guy getting dismembered I yelled wrapping a rag on my stub of a wrist. Mate can you open the door? I forgot my keys I yelled so she could hear me. She opened the door letting me in as I put on my crocs. So did Ja finally get the dock? She asked going back to wiring up a new baby. No. Captain Steroids got in my way so did his smaller clone version that has the coolest name. I said digging into fridge we bought from Craigslist. Looks like I lost my only chance to get him. Now he probably won't show his pedophile looking face anymore. I say as eat my food. Well you could always you know stop. May suggested tossing me a ball. I go to catch it, then remembered I had stub for a hand and my food in the other, so the ball hit my face ow. May fine I will stop for now and chill but if I get a single clue that he is out and about again I will start again. I say to her as she gets close to me with her face inches away. Pinky promise. She asks sticking her pinky out. Sure pinky promise just for you may. I say pinky promising her. She wrapped her arms me giving me a nice tight hug that I return. Don't worry pinky pie, both of our dreams will come true one day. Yours is one that I will support the whole time I told May booping her nose. Now come on let's try your new baby out for a spin. She smiled and me handed me my red sweater. No let's just go and have some fun just me and you she yelled cleaning the grease stains off herself. By the way has your parents reported you missing yet? I asked changing out my suit in a two minute sneaking a peek at May. No I don't even like to call them my parents. Ever since I got my quirk and it wasn't technology based like my siblings, they stopped caring for me and my dreams. She pulled down her new shirt, I first wanted to be a hero to help people but my quirk came and I was told I couldn't be one. So I went support so I could at least help heroes save people but my family shot down that idea the most. She said in a low voice that quivered. I pull her into a tight hug, who give a flying shit about what they think, those quirkest buck don't know shit about you, you're the best inventor partner in crime I could ask for I say to her, as I felt my shirt get soaked a bit. They need help of quirks to be good at inventing, well you learned how to do all the things they can you are better than them, and you will prove them wrong by going to UA, then becoming the world's best inventor I say as she looked into my eyes with hers that zoomed in and out. She nods her head as I patted it making her feel better, plus you can be a hero I say in a proud voice to her making her cry tears of happiness for me supporting her former dream. The Zuku thank you I am glad being your partner in crime, so I will become a hero with my support items to prove them all wrong, as long I have you supporting me, I will complete my dreams, she yelled out as we left to the city to have a lot of fun and throwing eggs at her former area, where she resided with an uncaring family. I lost Monopoly, do we have to do this May? I mean this is just a bit tough for me to handle. I said feeling uncomfortable don't worry about it won't be too rough. Mary assured me holding my shoulders. All you know is rough though, if you don't know what is happening. Mei Chan here beat me in Monopoly by a landslide slide and now I have to visit my parents, Mei just ignored me talking to you guys. 
Well Izuku, go knock on that door I will be right here so you can't run away. She says pulling out a camera that no matter what shot in HD like a movie. I go to the knock on the door and I pull back my fist at the last second. Do I have to do this? I can just call. I say trying to get out of talking to them. Hey you lost Monopoly so knock on the door she yelled at me. Hi and I will rip the bandage off I yelled and knocking on the door, hello anyone home I am a long lost child that went on a revenge filled murder spree, the door shot open to see mom. Hey mom it's been a why she just punched me in face. I deserve that. I say you get yourself captured she punched me again in the face. Promising that you will come back when you do you decided to go on a killing spree, she grabbed my shirt and elbowed my nose. Then you have the audacity to show up with a girl and knock on my door at this point her blows were breaking my bones. Then mother buck and all might gives you a chance to be a hero and you reject it, she grapples my shoulders and was about to knee my balls. Hold up not the nethers I say with her breathing heavily after beating my ass. Then we come in so the neighbors don't call the cops on us. I ask as she grabbed my wrist leading me inside with May keeping her laughter in and recording the whole incident. I see dad on the couch drinking coffee, hey dad is cack in here. I ask as he stood up giving me a hug then a headbutt sending me to the ground. Good to see you home Izuku he said in a soft tone. Missed you too dad. I said getting back up. I get it that I deserve that for ghosting you guys for two ish years but do I really have to get hit by every member of the family? I asked getting uppercutted by Kak and then tackled into the dinner table breaking it in half. I gasp for air and nice to see you too bro, I say out of breath. We get up and I look at them, are we done beating up the crazy vigilante yet because I would like to give you all a hug. The three look at each other then nod, is that a yes or a no? I ask confused the three just slam their fists on the top of my head, leaving three welts. I hold my head in pain, our wesh don't eat. I slurred from the concussion I just gotten from the blow, why are there three yellow birds flying around my head? I am gonna name that one Tweety. May stopped recording with the sound of a click sound, making them all turn to her. Who are you young lady and what is your relationship with my son? Mitsuki asked May. May scratched the back of her head, well I am May Hatsum, I am your son's personal inventor, and we have been making babies for the past two years she said with tons of confidence. You could just hear a something internally crack in my mom. They all slowly turned their heads to me. I started to sweat puddles, I promise you it is not what it sounds like. Mom grabs me by my collar shaking me, that is what you've been doing on your off time having kids with this lovely pink haired girl as she yelled at me still shaking me. Izuku you must do what a man should do and take responsibility for your actions. Masaru said stopping mom from shaking me. He firmly grasped my shoulder, now you will have to marry her whether you like it or not. He said as I looked into his eyes. Look what May said about babies she means invention she means invention I pleaded with them while May was getting measured by Mitsuki for a wedding dress. Likely story looks like Izuku is trying to get out of his responsibilities as a man Katsuki yelled smirking, knowing that he was adding fuel to the flames. I smash my head onto the ground bound, please believe me I am fighting for my life here I yelled with tears flooding out my eyes. Hut to a bit later, thank god for those I thought as mom took in my information. So let me get this straight. You let her stay at abandoned Paziria with you for two years. She said digesting what I said. Yep she continued, you both met at the trash filled beach that was also cleaned by you too. The first interaction you had with her threatening to shoot you then actually doing it. Mom said with questionable look. So struck a deal with her that you will pay her for weapons so you could kill. Then joined a mercenary join that get hired to do jobs for lots of money to pay May here. She said pointing at May who was drinking chocolate milk. What were they called again? She asked me golden card something weird like that. I said seeing dad physically flinch. Her parents are total hickheads and not have reported her missing for two-ish years now. Katsuki said getting smacked by mom. Going on to the highway massacre you called was your final lead to the man who abducted you but he got away and most likely won't come out again. She with me nodding. So now you are in your words chilling until you get another lead and supporting May's dream of being a hero support. Did I get everything? Mom finished with me nodding to her words. But an oversimplification of what I have done in the past two years minus the cool ass adventures I have been on. Like this one I say showing a video of me shoving a guy's head in the toilet with my foot. Dad was a child molester don't worry his wife paid for me to kill him. I said in a non-caring voice. She got a heavy discount and I got a kiss on the cheek for the video, pretty nice huh? Mom didn't even seem surprised from my tales. May though she elbowed my ribs, what was that for? I asked with her just turning away. Izuku, I am with this just don't turn into a man where. Mom said I looked at her shock at mere thought of me being that. Yes, I have acted like a stripper so I could kill a wealthy crime lord that seemed to like femme boys. What? A job is a job and sometimes you have to dress up hexy to get a kill. Look Izuku, we will let you continue this life as long you don't mess with the Yakuza. 
Dad said with seriousness, about that I may have gotten a couple hits on me one thing led to another, and somehow I got full control of the crime in my area. Well then you need to have an iron fist, so they listen to you then. He responded sipping his black coffee. Okay dad thanks for the questionable advice I say with glee. Kakin, I'm sorry. I say in a sad voice. Bro for what? He asked confused for what I said. I can't be a hero with you anymore I said with sad tone. I am a wanted vigilante that kills and the police know who I am I know All Might himself asked me to be one but I know no school will accept me, I yelled with tears because I broke a promise I made. I am sorry I broke the promise that we made. Itsuki pulled me into a hug crying as well, don't worry about you damn nerd I will a hero, well you are my vigilante brother that does the dirty work he yelled, saying a new future that is possible. May took a photo, then joined the hug along with mom and dad. Helping out, that should do it I yelled sliding down a ramp with my civilian cloths on. A nice pair of red shoes with a red coat. Following it up with black pants and white t-shirt that says. Dress shirt. I hop roof to roof to back up and see my handiwork that took a couple hours to complete. I covered the entire Endeavor Tower with my logo along with a message saying Deadpool wants his change back ha 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 ha. They are definitely going to think that he owes me money I laughed, then I saw a large amount of fire go off. Oh shit I might have no I definitely pissed him well time to dip for I am a civilian. I park her to the ground and land crash on a comfy metal trash can. I need to work on my coordination for jumping off roofs. I groan getting up. Well not like it could kill me I say walking down the sidewalk. I take out my knife and start to spin it around as I walked. The lie accidentally stabbed my hand again. Damn it I yelled pulling the blade out letting my hand heal. I feel a presence near me to the right. I turn my head to see a tall anky man with burn scars all over him. He had blue piercing eyes with black spiky hair. His cloths were loose and he had a black trench coat. Oh god you look like an avocado had hex with a grosser more older avocado, I yelled out surprised by his appearance. I can get that. He spoke up after thinking about it. I mean rough hex like they were just hate booking I continued while making hand signs, I get it he yelled at me with his hands lighting on fire with blue flames. Okay, I will stop it is just that you're just haunting I say putting my knife away. Look I just want to have a small chat. He said turning off his fire. So what do you want then? I asked nonchalantly. Why did you vandalize Endeavor's agency? He asked as his eyes shined brightly. He is an asshole and I know his image is what he cares about. So I going to keep doing this because it is fun to buck with people I say smiling crazily making the avocado mush back up a bit. Well looks like me and you can be friends then. He said smiling with his scarred stapled face. Also is your friend back there going to stop hiding because I can just feel the bloodlust from here. I said as multiple knives flew past the dude to me. I let the blades hit me as my attacker hopped on top of me with in her hand about to stab my chest. Hi my name is Toga Himiko give me your blood she yelled driving the knife downwards towards my chest. I caught it with my hand the blade stabbed through my hand, causing more blood to spill. You know that would've killed me, but knives, guns, and blenders can't kill me. I said getting up pushing her off of me. Look Bernie keep track of your crazy friend here. Before I go full crazy and trust me I can do more than stab. I say as my wounds heal taking out my knife holding it to her throat. Wow you hexy when you're covered in blood she said looking at me with her yellow cat eyes. Look I didn't think that toga would go into her crazed state already. The lanky man said as I noticed that they look like they haven't ate in a while. Look the both of you are coming with me. I may be insane, but I still like to help people. I said putting my knife away and taking out the one stuck in me. She is suffering from quirk shock that much I can tell from her crazed look, I got the stuff to help her so are coming. I asked as he nodded, by the way what should I call you Scarface? I asked picking the girl up after I knocked her out. Dobby, just Dobby. He said in a low voice cool name I said as we neared my home. Why are we at an abandoned pizzeria? Dobby asked me as I looked at him like he was stupid, why not? I opened the door to see May on the couch watching TV eating a slice of pizza. Oh Izuku your back her voice died out towards the end of the sentence. Why is there a girl in your arms? She asked with a closed eyed smile. Nice to see too May but she is suffering from quirk shock, so can you please get me a couple syringes so I can help her. I say placing her on one of the many tables the Pizzeria had inside. May rushed off getting rid of her dark aura instantly. Dobby sit on the couch I will help you later. I said taking off my bloody coat and tossing it in my bloody cloths pile that I still haven't been able to get rid of the bloodstains of. Wait I don't need hell I cut him off yes you do you are a sandwich away from being malnourished, I can say the same for her. I say grabbing Toga's sweater and lifting the sleeve to her elbow. May came back with the syringes we stole from an underground hospital for villains that I later took over of. I withdraw my blood and injected it into her bloodstream. Before you ask my blood is oh so I can transfuse it to her. It also has regenerative abilities, so it will her out in the long run. I say pulling her sleeve down and placing a blanket on her. 
Wait I haven't told you my name, yet I am Izuku Midoriya Aka the unkillable Deadpool I proclaim as he looked unimpressed, then I sat on a stool. Ever since you came out as a vigilante I had one question for you. He said leaning back eating May's pizza. Go on I have no secrets to hold mainly because people find out about them too easily I say as May came behind him with more pizza from the kitchen. I take bite as Dobby took in a deep breath, why are you a vigilante and what makes you keep going? He said as I thought about it. That is a tough answer to give because the answer has changed since I started. I say as May gave me a hug. At first I had finally escaped the facility I was trapped in for 10 years. I lost 10 years of my life just to be a lab rat. I saw and felt many things that only added fuel to the flames in my heart that was burning for revenge I say as I remembered why this journey started. I took a deep breath and continued, I met May who made my gear, and thanks to her, I was able to go as far could. She blushed from the compliment I gave her. I remembered everyone's face I saw on either on a screen or in person. So I went on my way hunting them all down to the pits of hell itself. I say taking a bite of my pizza. The more I hunted these people the more good came out of it. Drug rings, hex rings, and human trafficking I took them all down only leaving a pile of arms, legs and heads. Dude my brutally this area where only underground hero come to because the popularity heroes don't even think about stepping foot here. I say throwing a knife at a map of the people I hunted photos. I have gotten full control of the crime here I have an underground hospital for people that can't afford it. Look Dobby I became vigilante for revenge but that has changed from the past two years of constant bloodshed. To answer your question I am vigilante that had bad intentions that turned good over time and I keep going because if I don't then other get hurt for my lack of action. I finish as he took in the information. That was a mouthful but thanks for the answer. He said looking down. Look Dobby do you know what you want to be in this life? I ask as he looked at me shocked. He opened his mouth but no words came out. Look this society isn't perfect the area where our proves that but it has its good spots like the kids that run under the sun with joy ignorant of the world around them. I say remembering my time with my brother. Me and May can help you and Toga so you can make your own path. So take my hand and see the world in a better light I say sticking my hand out. He hesitated a bit then took my hand. But this should make sure that you don't follow some shitty ideologies from a maniac. I say smiling at him as he smiled back. By the way my lovely partner may might have a way for your scarred parts of your body. I say and he instantly perks up. Do you mean the Izu's goop I am trying to make May squealed with Dobby being confused from the name. That's not your um you know. Dobby questioned Izuku but May butted in well I removed a buttload of Izuku's stem cells, then made this experimental goo with some less than legal items. That Izuku stole from me so I make it though I still haven't found a proper way to mass produce it. May said pulling out a jar of red goo. Why did you make it again? Dobby asked as May trying to open the lid of the jar. Well I was trying to make it so Izuku could regen his body faster Izuku I give up open the jar please May said, handing me the jar. It could soon help regrow full limbs, May exclaimed as I handed her the jar opened. May grabbed his wrist rubbing the goo on it. She waited for a bit, then lifted the dried scar tissue to see healed skinned under it. It may take a bit but it seems that Izu's goop is working great just a bit slow. She said taking down notes. Dobby smiled from the fact that his skin can be healed. By the way can you do me a favor? I asked with looking at me with May taking notes on the goo's way of working. It matters what the favor is. He says peeling off some of his dried scarred skin. I need you to enter UA, helping others out, UA? Why? Dobby asked me as I pulled out a flyer, this states that UA will help you out living problems and will provide a dorm house to live in. I say with him reading it. I have enough money will support you for the tuition because that is a bitch to pay. I said rubbing my fingers together. Why are you doing this we just barely met he raised his voice at me. I look at him with my bright green eyes. Believe it or not I have a great memory compared to a certain wild weasel's cousin. I can remember the faces and names of all the people I saw when I was captured. I say remembering the amount of kids they were after for their quirks. So what don't know who I am I have been solo till I met Toga he yelled at me with flames erupting from his skin. I know who you are because you're just like me that is why I hate to look at you like this, an unstable person with immense power and thirst for revenge, you may be hiding it now but once a maniac with some buck up ideology comes out, you will jump at the chance for your revenge to happen, so you can have the excuse to execute the plan you have wanted to do for so long time to I yelled back at him with his face going pale. Surprised. Well so was I when a dead kid found me with a the same quirk that the people who captured me wanted so badly appear in front of me I say with him looking at me like he saw a ghost. Look if you go to UA they can make sure that you will be protected and eventually when endeavor is no longer needed the revenge you want can happen, I say with May bringing a lot of documents. Here you go Izuku I thought you would need TC she said grabbing a slice of pizza sitting down next to me. Thank you May you are the best I say looking through the files. Look to I may be insane but I have soft spots for children. 
Yes you are older but you get the gist of it. I said sliding him pack it. If you want I won't force you I can restart your life new identity and new background. He takes the packet shakily and reads through it. He places it down and looks at me with his eyes burning bright blue with determination no longer with hate. I will do it I am going to surpass my father even all might himself not to be number one but to help fix the crimes that have been buried with money he bellowed with his flames disappearing. When do I start? He asked me as I smiled at him. Well, let's not rush things the exam is in 10 months so I will help train your body and deal with your low heat resistance problem. I explained with him smiling. But first you must eat so your body can survive my babies, May yelled shoving food into his mouth. You are going to be our project so we must make sure you are healthy. I chuckled as I have to something to look forward to. By the way since you are dead on paper I will have to get you a fake identity so your name will be Tuya Midoriya. I say with him nodding. My family is filled with fire users so you will fit right in even if they didn't give a shit about me right cousin. I say with him laughing. I am going to love it here with you cuz he said as I laughed back while sending a message to Weasel to get me a guy who can make fake identities. Now that his story is restarted let me begin my plan to buck with the hero world itself with my good ass jokes. First things first I have to do is for people to know who I am. That is done because of my mass murdering and constantly bucking with Endeavor. So I am going to go on a spree of non-stop crime fighting with serious brutality that was the plan but somehow there is no crime right now. Suddenly I see a person on top of a roof near the edge. Time to be me I say climbing my way up using the fire escape to see a person my age. I could see tears coming out their eyes with some bandages along their wrist as well. Aw shit I ain't good at this. I think as I walk behind them. I lean over the rail with my arms crossed next to the person. Don't jump here because Endeavor's agency is just a couple blocks away from here. That is the sort of address you jump at. I tell the person as they turn to me I see how they actually look like. She had ear jacks for ears and purple hair with a punk outfit on. Her eyes seemed empty like she has had her world shattered. You're making jokes. She asked me sniffling her runny nose. I was bitten by a sad radioactive clown. I say wrapping my arm around her shoulder get off. I'm Deadpool what's your don't don't what? Don't pretend to care. You're assuming. I don't care yet. You're making it awfully hard for me to get my care on. This is a boy. A girl. Money. Did you marry a succubus and she might ruin your life? I say lifting my mask so she can see my teeth. Are you trying to make me jump? She yelled at me as I smiled no never. Though I've been told I can make people very uncomfortable. Hasn't this place seen enough tragedy? The heroes already went ham beating the villains before I could. It doesn't need your wandering soul ghosting the crap out of it. I say sitting on rail with her looking at me. So yeah. I'm sure a real hero would have something profound to say to you to make you feel better, instantly better but I take a pause as I see her confused from the whole conversation, I'm all you got. She looks down and starts sobbing more than she was before. Well Endeavor's agency is right over there. I inform her pointing down the right street. I hate you. I think maybe that's a sign you're on the mend. I say going into a thinking pose. I'll make you an offer if you're determined that this is gonna be your last night on earth what do you want to do? Have you ever been to a deep dope concert? I ask her making her smile a bit. You're a maniac. What is wrong with you? No. I haven't been to one and anyways aren't tickets like a million dollars and impossible to get. She asks smiling but still crying. Don't worry I know a guy with tickets I promise after this I will let you go. Cut to a bit later. I can't believe you. Are they going to be okay? She asked me as I took the tickets from the two guys I knocked out. I said I knew a guy with tickets. I didn't say he would give them to us and don't worry about these two. They are manslaughtering slumlords. I say as the band began to play just shut up she says to me. After the concert, see I had a blast. Who knew they were all so dope to meet where to now? I asked. Endeavor's agency observation deck. Ha you made a joke wait. Are you not joking? I ask sliding down my mask. Hey how about I get us a shortcut instead of walking to there? I asked her as she nodded. We walked together down the street I grabbed a bottle and chucked at man riding a motorcycle making him fall off. I grab it and place her on it then I hop on and drive away. Did we just steal a motorcycle? She asked me as she held on tight. I dunno did we? What does your heart tell you? Come on we had fun. Right. Aren't you glad that I was there where you failed to off yourself? I asked her speeding faster down the road. Yeah sure, but I think you have things handled without me. Like the rest of the world. You can let me off anywhere. She burying her face into my back. No. I can't. I am smart enough to know I'm dumb enough that I can't help you. But they can. I say pulling over at a suicide prevention help center. She looked at me angry, you promised to let me go. I am. This is where you and I part ways. I've been texting the staff. They're expecting you. I say turning my head towards her. What if I don't want to go inside? Are you going to make me? I dunno. 
I don't think I'll have to because I think you want to walk in. Will you walk in with me? I asked her as she thought about it. Listen I don't think you're crazy. You just need a little help and I am not the guy to help you. I say in a sincere voice. She nods and we walk in together. Take good care of her for me will you? I tell the staff. They nod as she follows them into for her treatment. She runs back and gives me a hug that I return, you will be okay I promise. I hop on the bike and drive back to the pizzeria book I forgot to ask her name A, I know how she looks. The party for new family members. Okay Dobby and Toga come whittle old me I said as I put on my red coat. Why it is so early in the morning Toga whine getting up from the bed we bought for her. It's 11. My point still stands. She responded with Dobby nodding who walked in my only merch pajamas copyrighted by Mei Hatsum. It was the only thing we had that fit him. Well I am going get your new identity, so I am going take you there like a little trip. I said walking out catching a loose wrench that was shot at me. May, why did you shoot a wrench at me? I asked as she shot another that I dodged getting lodged into the wall. I want to come too she said with smile that did not look like she was happy. Last time you got drugged so and she cut me off by hugging me tightly and giving me the puppy dog eyes with her very boat if I mean unique eyes. Hying you can come if that shit happens again, then no more got it. I just can't say no to those eyes. I said looking away as she smiled at me. She quickly got dressed with Toga. So did Dobby who looked better from being properly fed. They all left together to the golden card with Izuku stopping along the way giving some money to some kids with a map that led to an orphanage that he funds. We get to the hidden bar and walk in, hey weasel you got what I need. I yelled making everyone look at me. Look who is back the little menace to society is here. Hey Izuku is that an insult? Dobby asked me as I shook my head no, I am the youngest mercenary here and I think the best I said shouting the last bit. This pissed off a couple of people, now Izuku that may be true but don't tell that to their faces, ha 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 weasel laughed with one guy getting up. Hey kid you talk a lot of shit for someone that has never backed it up. The guy bellowed as he stood 7 foot 5. Now fellas don't fight unless you want to bet on your lives here. Weasel said in a serious tone. I think he wants to set up a match weasel don't you think? I asked staring directly at the very tall guy in front of me. But I don't thought over here is up for a match. Oh I am up for a match little man he yelled at me while I glaring at him. Well then gentlemen let's set bets first Izuku you go first, then Todd. Weasel said as everyone in the bar started to move tables and chairs, making a massive center for the two to brawl. Toga leaned over to May, do things like this always happen. She whispered with May nodding yep just go with the flow when Izuku is around it always get hectic one time I got shot at May yelled with happiness. Oh cool then we can have some fun here, Toga responded with cheer. How the hell are they so calm about this? Dobby questioned as he just came to get a new identity. Alright Izuku what two are you betting? Weasel yelled as I took off my shirt, revealing his toned body to the crowd cheered mainly the women cheering and whistling. May gave a death stare at the women, but they didn't care. If I win which I will I want him kicked out of the bar for good. I seen his sleazy eyes for May. I said as he looked me pissed. When I win I want ownership of the pink bitch yelled at me, I don't own my business partner. She ain't mine to give you damn pedo I yelled as he charged at me starting match. Let's dance I yelled leaning back dodging his attempts to the grab me. Someone is pretty mad I yelled leaning to the side dodging his fist that grew callous on his knuckles. I uppercut him jumping into the air to do so yahoo I yelled reaching my arm out grabbing neck, forcing his body to back. He slugs me in the as he fell dislodging my jaw. I recoil popping it back in as kicked my stomach sending me back. He gets up tackling me into the wall pinning me by the throat. Where went all that shit talk you brad yelled I need his jaw so he dropped me and I followed it by kicking his leg out making him fall forward. Here comes my dad's right armed haymaker I yelled slamming my right fist in his nose breaking it. You motherfuck I shut him up kicking his balls, I have buck no mothers unless you want me to ladies, I say winking at women that make their faces red. He gets up making callous bread throughout his arms. I am gonna beat you to paste he yelled as I punched his throat after weaving past his fist. Then I followed it by snapping his right arm at the elbow as he choked for air. He was about to scream until I grabbed his left hand fingers snapping them backwards. The bad thing about your quirk is it makes it hard to move for you, I yelled pulling on his left arm with my foot on his chest. I yank it dislocating it at the shoulder, the other weakness is the bucking joints I yelled kicking the back of his knee making collapse to the ground. At this point Todd was on his knees in pain from his arms, Todd this will be a reminder for starting this shit I yelled, slamming my elbow into his already broken nose, making sure that no doctor unless it was recovery girl could fix it. Mickey Tinkpanko get his ass out of here I yelled as they dragged him into the ally. Ooh alright Izuku undefeated champ of the bar, keeps his title weasel said hyping me up as he gave me Todd's card, his money is yours he said as he passed me a drink. Use the card for payment for the fake identity for my new cousin, I yelled chugging my drink pointing at Dobby who looked like he was having fun drinking. I put on my shirt as I heard Oz from disappointment. 
Here is the papers Izuku now your new name is Tui Amidori your quirk's new name flame body with the drawback of if too much fire is used, it will burn the user I would advise that you dye your hair green to match the look. Weasel said sliding Tui a drink that he gladly took again. Now that we got the paper mumbo jumbo out the way let's party Weasel yelled as I offered May's hand for a dance that she gladly took me up on. Izuku that was a nice show that you put up. She placing her head into my shoulder snuggling into crook of my neck. I hated that guy anyways, but anything for you. I said as we slow danced. Are sure they're not dating? The new Tui Amidoriya asked Toga, she told me no they're not but she does want to. It's just that Izuku is too dense to see her other than a partner in crime. Toga said looking at the two resting her head in hands. So it's Izuku now. Tuya teased her ass shut up she yelled at him downing her drink of apple juice that Weasel gave her. So why did you agree so fast? You usually take time to agree to something. Toga said changing the subject, it had one sentence that just hooked me on the plan. Let's just say that bastard will get what's coming for him, and soon he will behind 10 feet of cement. Dobby said smiling evilly as thought about the plan he quickly agreed to. Well that's nice but what will I do? She asked herself as she looked at Izuku and May dancing. Look you're 16 so just have fun, and if Izuku is around that means you will, and plus the crimes you done have not been linked to you. Weasel said to her as he slid another juice to her. How did you know about that? She asked him turning her body towards him. We hear everything here, plus we can also cover up many things so you are fine. He responded taking a shot of fireball. They all spent the day having fun till night hit with Izuku and Toga, dragging them all to his parents' house, because he and her were the only sober ones. So Toga do you want to be a hero? I asked her making her jump a bit. Can I be one? She asked with me nodding, anyone can be a hero all you need to do is work hard for it. Well if you have a clean record but even that can be covered up. I said dragging an unconscious Tuya who was drooling. Then I will be a hero she yelled waking up May he yelled slurred who touching my baby's hick then promptly falling back asleep. So how did you and May meet it has to be a good story. She asked me as I remembered. The first encounter we had together well to put it simply she shot me. That sort of random. Toga said confused by the statement. Then we just hit it off from there I let May stay with me in the Paziri away from her shit parents and siblings. I said ringing the doorbell to my parents home. I get no answer so I ring again, then again then again then again. The door slammed open with mom punching me face sending me flying back. Shut the buck up I heard it the second time she yelled as she looked at Toga holding May. Oh you must be friends with May come and Izuku if you do that annoying shit again, I will run you over with my car. She threatened as I dragged in Tuya who was still passed out. Deal. The Kugo awoke to loud snoring that he knew very well. Hey bro shut the buck the up he yelled at his brother that was currently sleeping upside down against the wall. I woke up from my dream of hanging the doctor with a his intestines and beating with his femur. Oh hey I kinda spent the night. I said with him nodding, let's get some breakfast he yelled rushing down the stairs. I do the same but tripping on air on the first step down. Then proceeding to eat shit down the flight of stairs. Oh looks like Izuku is awake. May said drinking her 6-3 shot coffee. Thanks for the help. I say sarcastically as I snap my head back to its normal position. No problem Toga said eating scrambled eggs. Izuku next time don't let the ghost trip you again. Mom said handing Katsuki his food. He can go buck himself I yell out getting smacked which hurt. Watch you buck in mouth mom yelled at me as I held my head. Well I need to start training Tui and my new cousin I say sliding them the papers. Don't worry he isn't related to my shit blood related family. I say as they both release a sigh of relief. Can you train me too? I want to be ready for UA so I can be a hero, Katsuki yelled as I thought about it. Sure I just to get one more guy to agree. Trust me this guy is an expert on how to build muscle. There is no way that he will say no to me I say while well, all of them had a look of doubt aimed at me. What? I asked confused, don't get me wrong Izuku you may be a nice guy but you make most people uncomfortable. Dad said drinking his coffee. Trust me I got this okay how about this you guys stay here while I get the deal up and running. I say grabbing my coat and exiting the house. Then bucks that he does something that gets him on the news. Kitsuki says eating his eggs. I second that. Mitsuki says turning on her soap opera with Misera nodding. Twenty says the guy he is getting trained us looks like an emaciated mummy. Tuya said eating a perfect grilled cheese that he made with his quirk. I bet he comes back bloody Toga says drinking a blood pack. Well since I know him the most as his best friend may started until Kitsuki cut her off. Girl best friend. Doesn't matter I bet all the above with the added part that he goes to All Might first, May proclaims, as they all shake hands with Mitsuki guiding the girls to her personal room where she measured them so she could design them some cloths. All the guys sat at the table not knowing what to do. Do you guys want to commit arson? Tuya asked as they looked at him. Ah what the hell it sounds like fun old man grab the keys let's go, Kitsuki said as they left the house to a private place Misero owned so they could burn stuff for fun. 
Cut to the awesome main character. Nice description of me I thought as All Might sat across from. No All Might said to me. Come on just help me out this time I said sitting across from him. Look young Midoriya you want me to train your brother and cousin so they can go to UA is that right? He asked me. I nod my head yes think of it as getting two more disciples I shouted trying to make a case. It is either you train them or I do and somehow they both end up becoming women somehow. I said with all giving me a confused face. What anything can happen remember my saying that I totally always say quirks or bullshit I say with him nodding with my sentiment. Though I agree with you on that statement. I won't train them unless you can listen to some of my rules. He proposed as I raise an eyebrow. No more vandalizing Endeavor's agency, no more hacking my phone to call me when you're drunk, and no more pissing Nezu off. He listed as I thought about it. Can you at least take one of those rules off because I want to have fun too? I said with him shaking his no. I make sad face and give him the puppy dog eyes. He looks away obviously struggling to say no to me again. How about this young Midoriya I will take out one rule of your choosing if you can beat young Tagata in a fight. He said as I nodded. Sure thing call the mini you so I can buck him up, I confidently say with all might smiling at me. Confident are you? I will love see you fight my protege. He say pulling out a phone dialing up night eye. Cut to later to all might tower. All might you sure you want this to happen? Night eye ask looking at me as I kick the air. Sure thing also young Midoriya can you keep a secret? All might ask me as I nodded. He released a large amount of steam after it faded, then I saw a crack head. Oh shit all might your steroids ran out I yelled as he chopped my head. He lifted his shirt to reveal a massive wound that was still healing, the hell happened to you? I asked looking at the wound. Two years ago I found the guy who the doctor who tortured you worked for. He said putting down his shirt. I beat him but not without a wound of my own. He said as coughed blood into a handkerchief. How did you beat him? I asked knowing you couldn't beat him by normal means. I smashed the top part of his head to bits. He said looking into my eyes. They have my cells that type of wound can be healed with them, that doctor is insane, he will fix him, I yelled thinking of a way to repair the situation. What did you lose? I asked most my lungs and my stomach. He responded. After this we will talk about helping you. I said seriously as he nodded. Okay Midori are you ready to be humbled? Mirio asked me, are you? I responded sticking my hand into my pockets. Both small might and night eye back up to the spectator's box and they gave the go ahead to begin. Mirio rushed me as I stood still. He sank into the ground as I kept my guard up. He reappeared behind me so I fell forward as stiff as a plank of wood dodging him. Missed me I yelled rolling to the side dodging a stomp. I get up taking my hand out of my pockets with my knife that May forged for me. A knife is useless against me he yelled flying past me. I know. I said slashing downwards as he phased through me avoid the knife. But it is a good deterrent. He began to release yellow sparks as he sped up diving underground. That's cool I said catching his fist from behind my head. The thing about me is I have been in so many group fights that my senses became very on point. I say turning my head to face him. I kick him the gut, the thing about your quirk is reaction time and focus. I say sweeping his legs out. You lost that focus when you were surprised that I countered your punch. I said driving my towards his head as it phased hitting the ground. Your instincts took over right now so that means you're open. I said as he kicked me away with the yellow sparks appearing again. I skidded back as he held his leg from the cut I inflicted blocking the kick with the knife's edge. The air shifted as if he was drawing the air towards him. He suddenly appeared in front of me punching my rib with multiple loud cracks could be heard. He give me a head butt breaking my nose instantly he uppercuts me sending me into the air. He got close and I shove my fist deep into his gut following it up with an upwards kick hitting him squarely in the jaw. Wanna hear a story? I asked as he got up dashing towards me. I moonwalk dodging him completely in the beginning God created Deadpool I said taking out a storybook filled with my adventures. And God looked upon his creation and he thought. I say using the book to block a blow as I spun on my head kicking him repeatedly. I launch myself at him as I phase through him I chuck my book at him the moment my foot exited his intangible body hitting the back of his head. Like I was saying and God thought. What did I buck did I just do? I yelled spinning to the left dodging Mirio, can you actually fight me? Mirio begged as I styled on him. Mirio later gived up because he couldn't handle my awesome dance moves and I didn't go down, no matter how many hits he landed. All Might looked impressed because he thought that I would have fought him till I covered in my blood. I left All Might Tower with a gift basket that All Might staff supplied me that I definitely didn't steal. The rule that I chose to get rid of was the one bucking with Nezu. I see cargo ship filled with supplies. I looked to my left and saw an axe I take out my mask sliding it down on my face. I know what I must do. Cut to the family. On today's news we footage of the vigilante Deadpool on a boat with an axe dumping all the tea into the ocean. The news lady said while well, Hatsum and the others watched. In his words and I quote let's Boston Tea Party this shit that was all he said before disappearing. 
she finished with the door slamming open. I got all might to train you guys I yelled coming in bloody with the last box of tea left in Japan. Nezu must be pissed now. All might looks like a crackhead now. Looks like I win hot hold you all may yelled pointing at Katsuki as he grumbled. I gave her a tight hug and we sat down. Bad luck just follows me. Okay use I gets get ready to be trained all might yelled as Tuya and Katsuki stood before him. The first thing about getting stronger is a proper diet he said, handing them a piece of paper, the American dream plan you have to follow this, so you can build muscle all might said flexing his biceps. None of us use steroids like you. I yelled getting punched into the ceiling by him. I deserved that I said with my head stuck in the ceiling with the rest of my body hanging. Since the of you aren't really buff right now I will teach you how to dodge all might said stretching. That doesn't seem too hard. Tuya said getting slapped into the ground by All Might's finger, by the way I won't take it easy on you like my master before me, he trained me in the same way. The two proceeded to get the crap kicked out them for the time All Might trained them. I soon got unstuck from the ceiling landing onto the mat breaking my fall. Midoriya, you mind coming with me? Night I asked me as I nodded. You said you might have a way for All Might be back at 100% right. He asked me as I nodded. I may not look at or sound like it for that matter, but I understand the human body more than anyone. I say looking at All Might's charts. My body is riddled with cancer that could kill me if I didn't get born with my quirk I would died. Due to that my organs themselves have a healing factor. I say looking over to see Mei taking apart the vending machine. I will give him the organs he needs so he can be the number one hero. I say signaling Mei to get me a Doritos as she gave me a thumbs up. Why are you helping? He asked me as I sighed. Look believe it or not I like the guy. Plus with him around the crime rate stays down and generally helps out everyone. Also his nemesis is the boss of the doctor who has my cells trying to replicate my quirk. As bonus I might be able to get my revenge. I responded handing him a large cooler. What is this? Night I asked confused exactly what we talked about. This cooler has all my organs that my beloved partner Mei Hatsum helped me extracted from my body. I say handing it over. Along with a jar of my healing goo name pending Mei said handing him the jar. She fed me a chip as I gladly ate the Dorito that we didn't steal. How did you do this in the first place? He asked me was I remembered. I took a buck load of painkillers like 80s bottles worth of them. So my partner dissected me and took them all out. I said pulling out my phone. I got a video of it want to see. I asked with night eye shaking his head no nervously. By the way I know the blonde one is your stepbrother but is the one with green hair really your cousin? He looks nothing like you except for the green hair. Night eye analyzed. Sure he is he is from my mother's side and if you want to you can look into my mind to see the truth. I lied as he thought about it. All Might has told me if I ever wanted to go insane all I would need to do was to look into Deadpool's mind where no logic makes sense. Night I thought as he shook his head. No. I will take your word for it. He said taking the cooler and the jar. He took out his phone and dialed up recovery girl who answered saying, what did the idiot do this time? Also make sure that me and May's names aren't mentioned I yelled with him nodding. Phew he believed the lie. I whispered to May as she nodded. I look at the training area to see Kakin being thrown across the room, he is being humbled. I say as May grabbed my hand. I look at her as she smiles with a toothy grin. Let's go out into the city to explore and shop she said making my heart do a weird irregular beat as she looked at me with her eyes that sparkled with wonder. As sure May let's go I yelled as I got my keys out for the bike I stole that May repainted green from its original red color. We rode down the street speeding with May holding me tightly. Suddenly an explosion happened ahead of us. I hit the brakes getting to a halt. Come on we just wanted to go them all, May yelled in frustrated as I took out a pair of binoculars from nowhere. The hell they doing over there? I asked while looking at the situation. There was a guy in a gimp suit using his teeth to stab people and cars causing the explosions. Hey here come the heroes I yelled as they began to cower in fear, saying they didn't have the right quirks, there goes my hope of me not having to intervene out the window. I said sighing at their incompetence as I put on my mask. May go to the coffee shop I will deal with this. Also I may destroy the bike. I said as she hopped off. If it does get destroyed bring the parts back so I can fix it please because I like this baby. She said with me patting her head, of course I will it's our baby after all I said as her face turned red. Also ask for an ice pack your face is red, it must be hot I said driving off. She sighed, how can he be so charming yet so dense. She questioned herself as she ordered a three shot coffee with extra sugar and creamer. The engine roared loudly as I got closer gotta love the upgrade she gave her I yelled speeding up into a wheelie. Flesh the gimp wearing freak yelled out sending his teeth at me. One of them struck the back tire sending me flying towards him. I reach into my waistband pulling out my favorite knife. You ruined my baby I yelled cutting up all the teeth keeping him in the air. He falls as I latch onto his foot then using all my strength slamming him into the ground onto this back breaking the ground below him. Lee sh he grunted out as I kicked his face knocking him out. Time to get back to May. 
I said as the hero surrounded me. Hands up Deadpool you are under arrest one yelled as they aimed their quirks aimed at me. Oh really now I wonder when the heroes will come and arrest me? I asked putting away my knife. What do you mean? Heroes are already here another yelled that had a water quirk. You are not heroes because heroes do not cower in fear in a fight against villains. Now if you excuse me before I kill all of you here for being bucking cowards. I said as multiple ambulances arrived to help the people hurt. Along with the police that locked up the gimp looking mother bucker. They let me past as I grabbed my bike. I lifted it to an alley taking off my mask as May came to me with some parts to fix it, she didn't take from another person's bike she did dot. We repaired her so she could drive as full throttle again. Oh looks like Midoriya took down a villain while on his shopping date. Night I said to All Might who was back to his skinny form. Yeah looks like he did and like I said to Nezu he would make a fine hero. Yagi said as he looked over the knocked out to Ia and Katsuki. By the way recovery girl gave the okay to the operation. Night I said giving him the phone. Thanks for everything. I mean if without you I would be probably dead. Yagi said with Night I nodding his head. You are my friend Tashi of course I would help you. Meanwhile with Toga at the Paziria, why couldn't I go on the shopping trip it's not like I will stab someone she yelled at her stuffed bear that Izuku got her. The stuffed bear looked at her with its button eyes falling over, not you two bear Izuku man I am so bored I am literally talking to my stuffed bear that I named Izuku after my crush, she yelled to herself. Might as well cook some pizza and watch some soap operas while they are gone. She said turning on the TV. Taking the trash out, may you there I am about to head in, I asked as I stood on top of a roof. Yeah I heard you don't get too hurt. I love you, May yelled hanging up the phone quickly. Ella love me? I asked myself as my face felt like it was on fire. Back to the job I yelled taking a bite of my chimichanga shit that burned my tongue. I finished my godly food and put my mask down. Time to start the mission Aka robbing I yelled taking a running start with my guns in my palms. I speed up as I reach the ledge and jump off heading straight for my target building. I smashed through a window rolling with the energy I built up. I bought my guns as the guards showed up aiming their guns at me. I throw a flash bang hitting one straight into the forehead. It goes off as I proceeded to knock them all out because I had to be less of a killer. All Might's words not mine I swear. I sprint down the hallway as more guards showed up. I run into a room and slam the desk against the door so they couldn't enter. Shit now what do I do? Shut up you're the one that wanted go go page fine you're right I yell at myself as I looked up and see a vent, die hard it is. The goons break in to see an empty room. They look up to see the vent cover opened. They aimed their guns up and shot at the vent. They see blood leaking and leave, it kinda hurts that they don't know who I am. I said crying two rivers of tears. I continued down the vents until I crashed downwards from my weight. I knew I should gone on a diet. I say hearing multiple clicks around me. Who wants to see a magic trick? I ask as I throw a flashbang into the air cover my eyes. As the flashbang goes off I shoot them all with my taser shot bullets that can knock out a cow, don't ask me how May knows that. I reach the stairway and start running up them reaching 50th floor gotta love infinite stamina. I kick open the door to see all of the goons, looks like I should have taken the elevator. Right fellas. I ask as they began to shoot. I slam the door shut while it shredded like cheese, man buck being page one yelled throwing a smoke blocking their vision. I take out my blades rushing and dismembering the closest guy next to me. I kick his head at someone else face head but continuing to tear them apart with my katanas. I unload all my bullets into multiple people until I hear a click signaling me that I had to reload. One person took that as an opportunity to tackle me. I get slammed into the wall getting pinned I will kill you, he screamed me as I laughed, death can't even do that what make you think a small time crook can do that. I yelled gutting him alive letting his inside spill. Anybody else that wants to end up like this chuckleback I ask as they fell the ground acting dead good. I walk down the hall taking out a couple people thinking that they could kill me like come on my full title is, the unkillable Deadpool, this is the place. I say kicking the door open to see the boss freaking out rightfully so because I was there. Now why do you think I am here? I asked him pulling up a chair and sitting placing my gun the table. He was sweating profusely as he was grasping for a single word to say. Well I am going to give you a hint. I said sliding a golden card to him. A hit was placed on you because of your business looks like you made a lot of enemies. I say pointing at him. But I am not here for them I am here for the families you keep extorting even after they paid you off. You used threats to get more money and you pissed off the wrong vigilante. I cheerfully said. Now it so happens that the money I gave them has a tracker it leading me to your location. I say placing my feet on his desk. But I will cut you a deal you give me back the money and all is forgiven you lone shark I proposed as he looked like he was shitting bricks. He nods quickly pressing a button that opened the safe behind him. I jump over the desk and him peering inside the safe seeing stacks of cash. Who do you think you are? The bank. I ask as I turn back to see him smugly smiling at me.
He got my gun from the table and was aiming it at me, that is my money, and like hell I will give it to you, after I kill you, I will beat those people to death with chains he yelled pulling the trigger only hearing a click. Funny thing really I almost never reload my guns because situations like this that I like to set up to see if people will betray me. Well looks like you made your choice may mistress death send you straight to hell where a lot us belong. I said walking to him as he tried to run away. He made it a couple feet until he tripped on air like the horror movies. Now this just sad for you not me I get a payday while you die on the floor like the bug you are. I said cutting his head off with my blade. I turned back to the vault getting my good old unreasonably large bag with a dollar sign on it out. I threw all the money inside the bag along with the jewels he had. I grab a document owe a deed to the building. I put it in my bag sending a message to Weasel to send the cleaners to get rid of the dead. I emptied the safe of the rest of the money and other crap he had. I made my way out with all the loot from this raid job. Time to take a shortcut I say waiting for it to happen. Cut to later, there it is I say while looking down alright I even got my normal cloths. I lift the bag over my shoulder carrying it with little effort. I make it to a worn down apartment complex and I enter heading to room no.616. I knock and I check the time, oh it's 4 in thr morning I hope I don't get shot from waking them. I say as the door opens to reveal a tall brown haired burly man. Don't worry about that I don't even own a gun. He say tiredly. Well thanks for the reassurance also I am here to help your family because you're the last ones on the list I say as he let me walk in with my bag. I walk in to see a pretty brown haired woman hello I said with her freaking out seeing my dollar sign bag, ah burglar she yelled smacking me with a frying pan in the face repeatedly. Honey he isn't a burglar he said he was here to help the guy yelled as I was floor bleeding. I am fine I said as my head healed while getting up. Like he said I am here to help. I am so sorry you had the bag like old cartoons I used to watch she yelled as I laughed. Well I got rid of the lone shark and his men. Right now I am going through the list he had of families to give them the money he took from them. I said this handing them stacks of cash shocking them. Why? He asked as I just shrugged I did it because I wanted to. I said as began to float that is new. I said getting stuck on the ceiling, par getting money from the lone shark again the younger looking girl yelled. No I am helping you guys. I said as I fell to the ground like mother like daughter you think. I said getting up again. He's telling the truth honey he is helping us. I hand them some more cash, don't worry about the taxes I got that covered this is a gift to you guys. I say as they all bow to me okay none of that crap I am just a no good vigilante called Deadpool. I hope your family does well MRS. And MR. Uraka. I say trying leaving as they all pull me into a hug, this is nice, double trouble, Deadpool you are going to be killed by me any last words. And please be appropriate because I have heard how vulgar you can be. Said to me as she press her foot harder on my chest while I stared down her sniper arm aimed directly at my head. 12. Well for starters the readers might want to have some answer how we got here. I say as she looked at me confused, so let me recap the entire event through a flashback, so see you guys in a bit. Flashback. Asked as it happened. Flashback. Flashback a couple hours. So what you are telling me that you have a date? I asked as Tuya looked down. Oh that is so cute I said patting his head. So how did you two meet? I asked with him forcefully removing my hand from him. I was walking down the road and I saw her so I asked her out and she said yes. Tuya told me as I nodded. Bullshit I said cheerfully, there is no way you a guy who has never asked out anybody ever. Has that good of game? I said as I see him look at me angry. Just tell me the truth. I promise not to laugh. I say as I see him sigh and take a deep breath. We matched on Cinder he said dryly. Really? A dating app? I yelled out getting punched in the face shut up don't judge I never asked out a chick so I did it the online way. Tuya said scratching his cheek. So why did you come to me? I haven't dated anyone and I am insane so the norm doesn't really apply to me. I say with glasses on with an open book labeled, the many reasons why I am insane, well she asked for a double date. He said as I gave him a shocked face. So I wanted you and made a join so I can fill up the slots. I threw my glasses off and tossed the book to the ground. Sure thing sounds like I can have fun gotta make sure that May says, I say as I get a ding on my phone from May, saying that she was in. Inda forgot that she has direct access to the cameras in here. I muttered giving Tuya a thumbs up, she said yes, so when do we leave? She said let's meet at a steakhouse in an hour. Tuya informed looking at his phone. Well then let's not have a lady waiting on us I yelled dressing up quickly. One hour later, alright everyone ready? I asked. They both nodded their head. I pulled out my phone and texted Toga to keep a lookout as she sent me a picture of us entering the building. Ought to say her stealth is top tier. I thought as we sat at a table waiting Tuya's date. Oh my god do you think she stood us up? I gasped as they look at me, maybe it is possible. May added with Tuya looking down. Nah I bet she will show if not we get some pizza and smoothies on the way home. I say bringing up the mood. You know it is bad to talk about a woman's intentions behind her back you know. 
A feminine voice said behind me touching my shoulder. She walked past my seat clacking her shoes as she did. She sat across from Tuya and next to May giving us a smile. She had short lilac hair along with pale blue skin that reminded me of cotton candy. Her pupils were green like mine, but her sclera was black. She wore a black dress that really popped out her curves. I felt a kick to the shin, so I shift my head to May to see her smiling at me with a dark aura around her. So can I get your names please? She asked as she took out a notepad. May Hatsum, Duya Midoriya, Izuku, Midoriya Bakugo, Jidis Kazuki. That is my name so how about we get to know each other I am reporter how you guys? She asked us. This has to gone to shit what do I say? I think as May say she is an inventor. I am going to be a hero. Tuya said as I saw her eyes glow she turned her head to me. I I am bucket man I am a mercenary for hire. She reeled back back in shock and said, well at least you said the truth of your profession. Though how did a missing person end up in this life of murder? She said with a cheery tone. May turned her head reaching into her pocket and instantly we heard multiple clicks around us. It would seem that that you came prepared. I said as the whole steakhouse we were in aimed their guns at us. Now now let's not jump the gun just yet we can still have a fun date together as long we don't try to kill each other. Chida said with a cup of coffee getting handed to her. Well what are your interests? Tuya asked her as she leaned in. Now we are talking I am into meta liberation a world where we don't have to hide our quirks and use them freely she proclaimed. Well for me as I want revenge on my father for what he did and is still doing. Tuya responded but kept going also want to help people and surpass all might to be the new number one hero. Wow big dreams but they could get in the way of mine. Though to get a stud like you might be worth it. She flirted while Tuya stayed stone face like always. Well May would you like to play the claw machine and definitely not break into it. I suggested and she nodded very quickly. I texted Toga to come in because there was no point of her not having fun with us. Amizuku let's get that thing, Mayor or as I laughed looking at the stuff animal that looked like a mix of a panda and duck. The door the swings and Toga latches onto my back. Ooh oh get me the that red panda she yelled as I nodded. The claw went down and fully grasped the panda duck. It went up shook a bit then fell back into the pile. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine it is not fine I said it at first calmly then started to yell at the end taking out my pistol aiming it straight into the glass. I blasted shattering the barrier between me and the stuff animals. Everybody looks at me shocked except for my friends and Chittis. I won. I said as I grabbed the two girls stuff animals they wanted. Thanks Azuku they both said at the same time looking at each other. We sit back down as Chittis writes in her notepad. So you guys are sure full of spunk so what I am going give each of you a proposal. She said with her eyes glowing with excitement. We all listened in to see what she could provide. I want all of four of you to join the Meta Liberation Army she says with lots of enthusiasm. They all look at me so I have to make the call for all of us. No, glad to hear that you add your weight what Chittis yells the last part. I said no for a very good reason. She leaned in with great curiosity to hear my reason. It doesn't sound like fun. I want to go on adventures and have fun. Your group wants alter the very thing I like to mess with and make fun of. What would I do if I had to see a war break out with many innocent people and children die in the onslaught of war? I said seriously and placing my gun on the table. Sacrifice will have to be made for true freedom, Chittis says sadly looking down. Freedom? That isn't freedom it is mindless fighting for a cause that might not work like Izuku said. Innocence will be lost we kill yes but we kill people who deserve it. Tuya said looking at Chittis's glowing eyes that stared right back. Wow this might take another chapter for the flashback. Well see y'all in a bit I yelled as they looked at me confused except for May, just go with the flow or you might end up dead. May said feeding me piece of her steak that she got from out of nowhere. Double trouble P2. But you are back now back to our date I yelled with them looking at me confused and just went back to talking. So you guys like this world better with the pricks that run it? Chittis asked as we nodded, who else would we buck with? Like I said I want to have fun and live a life with the people I like but that won't happen if your army goes on the assault. I said munching on some fries. Look what you are saying sounds great but there should still be some regulations because a bully beating a quirkless child with his quirk would not be punished because of the freedom of quirk use. It would become a world where the strong beat the weak into submission and it would totally legal. Our world is like this but it has limits yours has none. I say pointing at her as she begins to see what I am saying. The best we could ask for is for the next generation not to become a total buck up like us by helping them. Your group can do this all legally and with public opinion you can probably pass the laws but it takes time and that is something I got that and cancer like I become a monster type of cancer. I say reaching my hand out for her to take it. She reached her hand out about to take it. My instincts take over and with my pistol I block sniper bullet that was aimed at Chittis that shot through the window. Buck I barely had it repaired I yelled flipping the table and throwing the broken gun away. 
everyone out there is a sniper after Chittis Tuia, May and Himiko protect her, she is the target I will deal with the box sucker that ruined our double date, I yelled crashing through the window that shot. I checked trajectory where the bullet came from. I see a glint with a bullet piercing my shoulder, there is the little assassin I yelled running towards the sniper, scaling a fire escape up a building. I get to the top to have another bullet shoot right through my gut. Oh man that is a lot of blood. I yelled parkering to get to the shooter. Hey camper shoot this I yelled flipping out my middle finger aimed at the sniper. Not even a second later my favorite finger gets shot off. I was joking you mother bucker. I began to scale the final building where the shooter was at. I make it to the top and instantly get kicked in the face twisting my head. Wow such power I said excitedly twisting my head back in place. Hucker up bitch I shouted sucker punching the shooter in the face, making them skid back with another bullet tearing through my eye socket. How the buck do you have such good aim? I asked with another bullet hitting my chest. I practiced you annoying prick. Who are you and why did you crash my fun time playdate? I yelled as the clouds moved to let the moonlight shine on the person to reveal a female with a sniper arm and scope aimed at me. My mission as a hero is to terminate the newest higher ranking Metal Liberation member Chittis Kazuki, Aka Curious, she said, hero. Bullshit you are just a killer like me the difference is that we have different employers I yelled pulling my favorite knife out. I do it for justice I get dirty so others stay clean she yelled at me, you're nothing but a damn tool for the May gun that they command and pull the trigger of. I rush her somersaulting towards her dodging a shot with her punching my stomach with her fist coming out my back, you already made a hole there you daft hunt, I shouted slamming my fist into her gut, sending her a couple feet up. She latched onto my arm twisting her entire body flipping me over into in the ground. She stomps her boot onto my chest while shooting off my leg, aiming the next shot right into my face. Flash back over, flash back. Quit acting ridicule she yelled pressing the barrel to my nose. Says the licensed killer or should I say Heroes Association's very own assassin Lady Nagant. I said pressing my head up. You act like you are any different from me you kill villains too she shouted at me. That is why I said we have a different employer mine are people who need help. Well yours are the top 1% that don't want to deal with the villain problems me and you are the same just that I am better than you I shouted at her. You listen to a hypocritical association that say they help people when they have people kill others that they are too scared to deal with legally. I yelled shoving her off me with my barely intact arm. I am doing what is right for the world she said to me angrily is that why you became a hero to kill. You are too blind to see the wrongs that you are being used to do like a puppet I say as rip my shoulder off and tossing it to her. When you can see perfectly before you do anything idiotic come find me you blind sniper. I yelled jumping off the roof as Chittis activated her quirk landmine to explode my shoulder piece giving us the opening to escape. A bit later, look to e I know that date went terribly, I would like to do it again someday just the two of us. Chittis said walking away blowing a kiss to him. As sure that is all Tuya said. May Himiko I know that went badly but let's have some fun later at the arcade. I say as they snuggle their stuff animals. I will take that as a yes. Izuku I am going to go off on my own now. Tuya spoke up, All Might gave me a scholarship to UA Mirio got one from Sir Nidai. So UA will provide living conditions and the exam is a month away. You can move out when you want I am not your parent, I am just a friend that is helping one out because they are struggling. Just call and I will help so just wait till May, Kakin, and Himiko show up because I want you to help them out. So can you please help them out? I asked with him nodding. Of course I will they are my family like you cousin. Tuya says smirking. Are you mac and me blush I said giving him a hug walking home. It was times like these where I really wished the world was kind to me but deep down, I know better than anyone that happy times never last. Speeding up, Tuya moved out a couple days later we were sad but this meant that he would finally put his all in to be a hero. Though we were happy because that meant we could finally prank UA events to embarrass him. He passed the exam with flying colors obviously. He got really close to beating All Might's record of 156 points. After the first day he called me saying that his teacher expelled the whole class except four of them. He later told us that he looked like a homeless man that wore all black with yellow goggles. I later told him that was Eraser had one of the best underground heroes that the whole underworld feared except me because it is me. He erases quirks and beats the living shit out of you pretty scary. I've never run into him personally so good for me then. The sports festival rolled around and we decided to dye the girl's hair green. Also put on blue contacts to match his eyes. We also got Kakin, mom and dad to do it with us which was nice. The girls put makeup on my face so I could hide my diamond freckles to match with them more. The moment Tui appeared in the obstacle race we screamed our heads off yelling his name. We had also made large signs that had a poorly painted version of his face on it. Ooh Tui you better win cousin we screamed as the entire looked at us. Well would you at that? Looks like one of class 1A's family is here to cheer present Mick yelled with Tuya looking down, avoiding eye contact with Mirio patting his back. 
Duya got 7th place in the race which was great making us cheer louder for him, and I got brilliant idea to take out my ion powered confetti gun. I blasted it into the air making a large bang with green and blue paper going everywhere. Now that is stepping up there cheering for a family member present Mick yelled as the second round started. Alright the next event will be a free for all the higher you place the more points you have so first place has 1 million points. All I zoomed in on a kid that looked like Sasuke from Naruto. He looked like he was going to pass out from pure anxiety. Mirio, a blue hair girl and Tuya helped out when round started with Tuya, making a ring of blue fire around them, so no other students came, except for a two class 1B students. One had bright on yellow hair that was on fire. The other had rabbit attribute and dark skin that screaming at Sasuke to fight her. Though she fell on her face because the round ended and we bursted out laughing. Though I did see Endeavor looking at Tuya like he saw a ghost. During the 45 minute break we met up with Tuya and what was left of class 1A, hey Tuya you did great none of those buckers could touch you, I yelled yeah it is almost like I wasn't on fire, he sarcastically said rolling his eyes. Wow sarcasm is unbecoming of you. Mom said to him as she ruffled his hair as he smiled. You did great out there. You really did show them who was boss. Dad said to him. Wow your family sure has lots of energy, Mirio said patting his back. Thanks guys but we still have one final round. He said lightly smiling yeah and after all of us will go for pizza, I yelled as we all nodded. As we exited I saw Endeavor peering at us. He looked distraught and I had a look of regret for some reason. I look away walking away as he also stomped away. We saw the final round it was a tournament. Tuya did great beating the rabbit girl in hand to hand combat though I noticed that the girl landed a solid blow on his ribs. He had a couple broken ribs for sure. He ended up getting second place due to Mario using his super strength to smash away the flame shot at him. The round ended with Mario knocking him out of bounds when they both used their strongest attacks. Endeavor gave the medals he took a little longer on Tuya than the rest. He didn't say a word but he looked ashamed the entire time. Time passed as we all dyed our hair again for the school festival. Due to the small amount of students in class 1 they ended up making a dragon with Tuya shooting fire out of its mouth. After everything he got an internship to Endeavor that he accepted. He called me saying that he didn't know what to do. Tuya he has knowledge on what to do with fire. He is the best teacher you can get to teach you about using your quirk. I said as he agreed to my statement and accepted to his internship. Though during the internship he was able to see his old family when he was invited to his old home for dinner. He saw his siblings though he could tell that Shoto had become much like himself resentful of their father. His mother was gone and Shoto had a burn on his eye. Shoto do you use your use your fire? He asked no I will not use that bastard's quirk he yelled directly staring at Endeavor. Well how about this me and you fight with quirks? If you win I will back off but if I win you have to use your fire. Tuya said with Endeavor looking at them intensely. They walked to the training room and Tuya saw something in his old room a shrine. Hey Endeavor what is up with that? Tuya asked with Endeavor looking down, my biggest regret is a father. I didn't listen to my son and told him he couldn't be a hero. Though he still trained really hard to fulfill my dream of surpassing all might. His body had no resistance to fire, so when he used his quirk he burned himself severely. Endeavor said lighting an incense. I could have trained to him to be stronger and maybe he would to still be here. If I had supported him maybe the accident might not have had happened. Though I am still proud of him. He did what he said he would do that would surpass me. He continued to say with a straight tear coming down his cheek. He quickly wiped it away. Shoto looked at the photo then at Tuya writing a mental note. They fraught with Tuya getting the upper hand with his flames melting the ice with ease. Shoto did his best only for Tuya to push him into using his fire. They both charged up their fire to extreme temperatures. They clashed their strongest attacks, causing a massive explosion of fire. Shoto was knocked out as Tuya stood with burn marks all over him. Get me my bag I got my medical burn cream. He said to Fayumi and Natsuo. They rushed back with his bag and he took out a jar. What type of cream is that I've never seen this one anywhere. It looks more like jelly she yelled helping him apply it to his burn body. You have a weak resistance to fire don't you? Endeavor asked him so he nodded. My family are fire breathers so when I got my quirk I produced it. I didn't have a body that could resist the fire. Tuya lied with Endeavor accepting it. That cream what is made of? A friend of mine has hyper regeneration, using his stem cells as the main component to make sure my body could heal from burns really easily. Tuya explained as his burns quickly went away. He left later giving just enough of the cream for Shoto if he wanted to get rid of his scar. Time passed more with us doing the same to Tuya at the next sports festival but upping the previous year with large portable cannons that shot a buck load of confetti. He me and May have been really handsy these days. Taking showers with me saying it saved water so that is good. They have been hugging me more lately always caressing me when they do. When I turned 17 they both gave me a kiss that was nice of them. The exam for UA was not far away so Kakin upped his training with Himi doing the same. 
Maeve began to work on a sustainable energy source to power her babies. The three of us slept in the same bed went accidentally exploded hers and Himi's. Though my job didn't get easier Lady Nagant has been hunting me. I save a girl that looked like an alien along with a boy that can make himself hard. With him the jokes write themselves. Furious and Tuya have been talking more and Himi was able to grab me a photo of them going to the movies. Even though he told me he was training with All Might. Speaking about him. He has gotten better his smaller form looks more alive and more buff. So he doing great for himself. Weasel has been keeping me busy with the jobs no one would take because it was too risky. So why not send the one guy who can't die. Also met a nice old lady that I was supposed to kill but it is an old lady I can't just kill her, so I faked her death and set her up with an apartment, also gave her a 3D TV, even though she was blind. So the day finally came for my family to go to UA to fulfill their dreams. May and Toga dyed the tips of their hair green. Well mom got a green highlight for me because she wanted a reminder of me on her because she virtually looked the same like Kakan. The reason I am telling this story is because I am bored as buck mainly because I am alone in the Pizzeria with the animatronics. That is why I have been talking you two for the whole time they have been gone. I wonder how they are right now I bet they all passed with flying colors, hut to my family, so why you call us to the office mr.nezu. Toga asked the three of them took a seat. Nothing big miss Toga just need to wait for the rest to come. He responded. Let me ask a question to the three of you. What do you think makes a hero? He asked them. They all look at each other nodding. A hero is person that protects the civilians from harm against people that have the title of villain and natural disasters. They said at the same time. That is a great answer. Now what about vigilantes? They are people who use their quirks illegally to help other people sometimes more than other heroes or law enforcement. They answered again. The door opened to reveal Mitsuki and Masaru Bakugo. They took a seat too with Nizu taking a sip of tea. I am not a fan of vigilantes for the fact some go too far when fighting and end up killing villains. He said coldly. He reached into his desk and pulled out a massive file filled with paper with the name Deadpool on it. This made the color of their faces drain. May Hatsume you have provided the gear of a vigilante that is a huge crime. Kitsuki, Mitsuki, and Masaru Bakugo you helped hide the said vigilante that is also a huge crime. Himiko Toga you are in the same boat with them along with you being a runaway after a certain incident. Nezu said spreading the papers from the file out. We have the evidence for all of you to prove these statements true. The countless amount of camera footage and a certain glove that still had a hand in it. The glove itself had a symbol that has your DNA Hatsum. Izuku Midoriya Bakugo is the said vigilante in question. He is wanted and is being hunted by our top heroes. He has killed over 172 villains or abusers the number will rise later. Nezu taking another sip of his tea. The five of them didn't move a single muscle. I was one of the judges for the exams and I have to say the three of you are really impressive. Better than most pros in terms of skill and power. Hatsum your inventions are top tier that can rival a lot of professionals. So this just breaks my heart to say this. Nezu said looking down. Your admission papers to enter UA are rejected, and you three are banned from ever entering UA, that also includes being blacklisted from any other hero school like Shiketsu. Nezu said as they all look destroyed. All of you are looking at life in jail. Nezu said to them coldly, but I have proposition for the five of you. So you all don't have to stare at a cell door for the rest of your lives. Nezu said to them. They exited the office devastated after hearing what Nezu proposed to them. His final words to them rung constantly in their heads like an alarm. I will give the five of you a day to decide. I know this is hard but is the best I can do for you whether you like it or not. The choice was made. I saw my family enter the Pizzeria so I let off the confetti cannon. Yeah you all pass I yelled running up to them. May and Himi I packed up all your things may I couldn't get all of our babies so I put in the best ones. I know all of them are great but some are better than others. Oh Kakin, I also got you a limited edition All Might figurine that is worth a fortune in great condition, Mom Dad, I got you two tickets for a cruise, so you don't board, well Kakin is out of the house. Look you guys were gone so long I set up a whole party I even invited Tuya. He is in the kitchen with the cakes. I said pulling out party hats. Okay one for each I had these especially made for this occasion a couple months of ago. And I go the animatronics to work again thanks May for teaching me how to invent and fix again. They can play the show while we eat our cake. I stared at them they had distraught faces and red eyes. Oh did you guys not pass? Well just in the case I made another cake that reads you always have next year. It is chocolate it's my favorite flavor. Ooh I also made your very spicy curry that would kill normal people I say placing the hats on them. Why do you keep looking at me like that? Was it not enough? I can run to the store with a bike and pick up some ice cream if you guys are that sad about it. I was going to leave but May and Himi pulled me into a very tight hug. I heard them sniffling and crying into my shirt. I pat their heads hey Pinkie Pie Goldcap please don't cry like I said you guys have next year to try again. Izuku it is not about the exam. 
Dad said to me placing his hand on my shoulder. Son Nezu gave us choice. We have to make a choice and we want you to decide. He said in somber tone. Nezu? What does he have to do with this? Did he fail you because of me? Oh I am going to roast that rat for dinner I yelled. No honey due to our obliviousness we messed up. Mom said with Kakin looking down. No, you didn't. I did everything I can literally prove in court that you guys had nothing, nerd the evidence is cut and dry, he has footage of us being together like a family, the gear Pinky made for you was linked to her with her DNA, all of us are your accomplices, this can put us in jail for life, Katsuki yelled out with tears streaming. The choices he gave us was either we all go to jail for being your accomplices, we turn you in to save ourselves, or we cut you completely out of our lives, no contact at all. Dad said as I looked at him shock. W wait no this has to be a joke I barely got you guys back I yelled looking down, I can't leave you guys again, he gave us one day to decide so we want you to decide for us. Himi said looking directly at me breaking my heart. I see can't, it's alright Aizu we can run away together live in the shadows like ninjas we can fake our deaths or skip town wait, that is the same as running away, I don't know what to choose, I don't know what to do. Mei yelled with tears running down her face. I looked into her beautiful eyes they said to me that she was afraid and it completely shattered my heart to see her like this. I promised to help them with their dreams all the way. Fully support them now I am the reason that they can't complete them. So I pulled the best smile I could. I promise to support all of your dreams no matter cost, so I need you all promise me something right now. I said as my breathing became ragged. BP promised they all said at the same time choking at the end of it. Forget about me. Live your lives without me in it. The loud slap rang across Paziria. Mei was breathing very heavily, how can you say that to us to me forget you? I can't do that how can I forget the man I love who helped me out my hell that I called my life how? Please tell me so I can understand like when I build my babies with you, you promise to never leave me alone, she yelled pulling my collar. She loved me. Mei, you walk away and never think about me ever again. You don't come back nor accept me back that is how you move on from this from me I shout as I heard a crash behind me. I looked to see Tuya with a broken cup on the ground. What going on? the hell do you mean move on, we can't do that what about you Izu you be alone Himi yells at me as I look down small price for my family's happiness. I said patting her head. And one that I am going to pay for. I look at my parent and brother who were torn from my choice. Come on guys. I will be watching you guys from afar so nothing heads your way. I will always be there for all of you when you need it I swear on it. I say forcing a smile and Izu gave us a day so we have one last day together as a family. So let's make the best of it. They nod to you this stands for you too. After today none of you will see me again on your own accord. So since you passed let's have some fun that I set up. I said as I cut the cake handing them each a piece. We talked about the fun we all had. Mayor revealed some of my more inappropriate moments at work that shocked mom and dad. Mom told stories of Kakin as a kid and dumb shit he has done. Do he help the girls cone to terms of leaving me behind like he did with his old life. I turned on the animatronics to play their show till one began to choke me out. It was the bear when I went to turn them off his eyes went all black. Lucky for me May turned him off quickly. Himi got into my alcohol stash began to drink it. Though a single cup got her drunk. She slurred but I could understand her she proclaimed that her and May loved me during Cherokee doing a duet together. I want to be your girlfriend. It made feel like the asshole for not noticing. I went to the back of the pizzeria and grabbed all of the fireworks I could find. We blew up a watermelon along with anything I had in the fridge like a full chicken, then we decided to the light the night sky up as if it was day. It took a bit but we set up as many in a circle. Tuya sent his beautiful flames lighting the fuse. It quiet for a bit, then suddenly multiple loud booms went off at virtually the same time making me death. The explosion of fireworks ruptured my eardrums. The night glowed like it was day for a couple seconds with the fireworks exploding constantly. I took them in a joyride across city speeding down the road over a hundred in a car I didn't steal from a drug lord the hell you talking about. We went home after a bit just to accept what is ending in a couple hours. We just sat down on the couch just talking. No more no less just talking about the future for them. Nothing exciting no crazy explosions, no singing or me doing anything crazy just speaking. We did that till we were all too exhausted to talk. We stayed on the couch in silence as the seconds turned to and minutes turned to hours. We held one another tightly never wanting to let go. The light of the new day shined through the widows. My with them time together was up, that was I could all think but as they say everything comes to an end. The clock finally stops ticking. I got up before them and loaded the car up with their items. I wrote a letter and placed it in the glove box. Inside it was a separate bank account that had more than enough money for their tuition with a lot extra. UA may be a great school but it is expensive as hell, so I made a spare account for them years ago. I wanted them to keep it because it was for them anyways. I cooked a simple breakfast of eggs, bacon and toast. Every second that passed felt like I was going to explode but kept it together for them. 
I put on a smile because Yagi told me that at times of despair put on a smile so the other around thinks that everything will be alright. Not bad advice to make others feel safe even when the world is falling apart. It gives them a sense of hope that you know that everything will turn out fine and dandy. Soon they all awoke and we ate in silence as we already said what was needed to be said. There was officially nothing else to say I was going to be left behind because of my selfish actions. This was my fault in all of its entirety, though admitting it to myself didn't help it made me feel even worse. I became a vigilante that kills bad people for money and I stole from rich villains. Due to that I jeopardized my family's livelihood and future. This is my last selfish request to them so at least I can see them do great things for their lives from afar as a stranger. I went to open the door to let them leave but my legs couldn't move. I kept reminding myself that it was for the greater good to convince myself enough to move. I opened the door with the car fully loaded already for them to be as comfortable as possible. I tossed Katsuki the keys. It's all yours buddy I said with a smile. He hugged me tightly as I hugged back just as tight. May came out with a box that I have never seen, this was made for you because you are the only one I trust with it. May said strapping a device to my wrist. It is a teleporting watch. I made in the off chance that you ever needed to escape the heroes. It is the only one in the world because I invented teleportation. She said hugging me. She took off her goggles and placed them on my head, these are a reminder of me for you. May these are your prized possession. I said with her shaking her head no, the time I had with you was my prized possession. You were the only to ever say I could be a hero so I will be. Just for you because you believe in a dream that I no longer believed in or thought was possible. So just watch me May says to me as I give her a hug and she gave me kiss that felt bittersweet. Himi gave me another kiss, you took me off the streets. Even when I attacked you so please watch me become something you can be proud of not a crazy blonde chick that likes to stab things. Izuku no matter you do in life I will always be proud of you. I have supported you this far why stop now. Damaseru said to me with Momitsuki nodding and giving me a kiss on the forehead that was filled with love. I left a present in the glove box open it when you get home. Duya was the last one and he gave me a hug that felt like something in me just broke more. I stayed strong as Katsuki started the car. The engine roared as if it was alive and crying as well. I slid down May's goggles with a Dodge Challenger roaring on the driveway. As they pulled away I looked at each of them in the eyes. I gave them a large smile and waved at them happily as they drove away. Soon the car disappeared from my sight as I put my hands down. Suddenly my hands got wet. I looked down to see droplets of water. Is it raining? I asked myself looking up at the bright blue sky as more water fell on my body, yes it is raining. I went inside locking the door collapsing to the ground to my knees. I take off the goggles and teleporting device I place them in a safe spot away from me before I broke completely. Why I yelled flipping the table shattering the plates on it. Why, 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 why me goddammit why answer me you bastard why. Please just make the pain stop already. From the outside you could only hear the sound of things being broken and the wail of a man that has lost everything he cared for. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video.and have a fantastic day bye.